This is the People Class Podcast, the official podcast of the People Class. Show your support at patreon.com slash the people class. Send us a shout out at the people class on Twitter and send us your feedback at the people class at gmail.com. Class is in session. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. How, how about me? Yeah. <clears throat> cool, cool. All right, man. Yeah, I don't have a topic for today. So, uh, uh, I thought you were writing some stuff down. Oh, no. I, I was researching for my uh, next... Um, uh, Late labor history. Oh, okay. And that that ended up just morphing into something already. Um, I'm working on uh, my third script for that right now. It it just comes out of all the research that you know, it's a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. So, what was uh, then? What was your uh, personal realization today? Oh yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you're talking about centrism and uh, the failures of that, and moderates and status quo and uh you know um just holding a group chat with uh my 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 partners and friends over uh, at who are we movement mm-hmm. and uh just li- doing this research man um just just on one just the opposition of organized working class unions and movements um just just seeing how um segregation was something that was introduced as a political wedge issue which uh, we see the effects of today um jim crow laws and uh the continued persecution of blacks in america Right to maintain a to maintain a uh, division between uh, working class folks. Yes, yes, because when they started talking, uh, they they started becoming too powerful. Um, I, I was asking around, you know, just for some information with this because um, you know the information I, I'm I'm looking for for anyone who's listening. By the way, um, <clears throat> what I'm researching is currently the link between healthcare and employment, how and why that came to be. Uh, And in this, in in my research, I ended up stumbling across this uh, National Institute of Health article that was written in 1991, uh, just before the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. And it 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 didn't necessarily provide any answers to um, a socialized, or, or, or having a socialized uh, healthcare network or system, um, as opposed to um, a private healthcare system, and um, I, I, I'm just doing so much research into this. Uh, I'm going as far back as to before uh, World War One, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, the, the 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 New Deal um, is a really golden moment in the u.s history it it is and it's a reason why it stands out so much uh in in the u.s history uh and then you know uh, i'm just gonna put that there we'll we'll stick a pin in that um so i'm diving into things and i run into adam smith who is the father of capitalism right this scottish economist slash elite philosopher um Really, honestly, when it comes down to it, he's a greedy aristocrat who had some sort of power and, and influence. And this is how uh, we end up in 2020s America mm-hmm. in this neo-capitalist system. Um, and you look at all this stuff, all these systems, you look at the police brutality and, and the reason for the police uh, system in America. Um, you look at how overwhelmingly for the majority of the life uh, cycle of this country, um, damn near half of the population who, and I'm sure this is due to keeping people uneducated, um, is, or, or excuse me, are um, moderate, right? They identify as moderate, and that's a problem. And then, uh, you, you know, you, you go and look at how the rest of the developed world 
has moved past this really for the for, for the most part there, there's still some uh very powerful nations out there who have a, a capitalist system sure um but there's so many others who have embraced uh social uh welfare right um we, we we've in my research going back i'm looking back to the 1800s um we have stayed behind right the u.s um stayed at the starting line and uh, while the rest of the countries progress into something better that actually worked for the citizens that live there. And um, it's really just sobering and depressing and seeing that we, we say status quo and a lot of people are thinking status quo in the, in, in the way of um, our, um, our U.S. party system, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, we understand it as being a right wing conservative ideal. And we see now these uh, faux Democrats who um, govern under these uh, conservative right wing ideals, um, with, you know, with this laissez faire yeah. style and, of government. And not even in necessarily conservative areas, mm -hmm. quote unquote conservative areas of the country. C correct, correct. Matter of fact, um, you know, and I, and, and I go, I go, um, man, so I, I'm looking at, I'm looking at so much here, right? I'm asking so many questions that a lot of people just are never taught to ask in this country. That's the reason why we're still here. Um, and, and it really shows you the power of media too, mm -hmm. right? Um, why, why, why is it that politically, right, in the U.S., um we were only really allowed to have and were probably only really introduced to this two-party system I, I believe this system was always a false uh smoke screen from the get-go um I, that, that that might be some foil hat stuff right there but just looking at how things have progressed or not have or, or rather have not progressed um and you start analyzing this two-party system and the Democratic Party is the party of the people and the Democratic Party, as far as passing any legislation period, uh, be it beneficial or detrimental to uh, the working class citizens of this country, um, has always been very ineffective in comparison to the uh, right wing, uh, to the GOP. Um, and I feel like they are called the People's Party and they are indeed the People's Party and they are meant to be effect ineffective for a reason mm -hmm. because of the fact that they have always been uh, members of this elite uh, club, right, that has been around since 1776, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm ranting so much here, but like you, you, you look at, okay, why, why did, why did the, uh, why, why did the uh, colonists uh, flee Britain? Um, to escape this very thing that we're living through right now. And then you realize, hey, you know, was this vision of America that we so believe uh, and are written in the history books to uh, basically idealize um, our forefathers? Um, was that all? What was that always a propaganda smokescreen as well? Did they were they in fact just another group of social uh, sociopath, narcissistic, uh, small business owners who got jealous in, enough to <laughs> Uh, form a revolt and had the finances to form a revolt and also sail across the Atlantic because that wasn't a people didn't people couldn't afford that you didn't take cruises across the Atlantic back in those days right You're about and so they came specifically right yeah yeah just just the migration to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and just the power structure that formed behind it because really we're looking at what um, the Tea Party. I mean, we're, we're we're this is the same system that 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 they claim they 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 fled from and fought against, right? In the in the Revolutionary War. And why in America are we under those exact same circumstances? You know, like what 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 was it? Just hey, uh, as a, a group of people said, hey, you know, we're going to go and do this thing over there because we're tired of the influence they have over here and if if um they can't reach across the ocean you know maybe we'll be successful at it and uh then uh the chinese invented gunpowder and uh further advancements and weapons of death developed uh we won the uh revolutionary war and gained our independence and back to uh exactly what mommy was doing mommy and daddy uh we're doing exactly what we learned at home uh, as kids um in the in the form of britain right um, 
this is ridiculous, man, that in this country specifically, compared to the rest of the developed world, really nothing has changed. Our system of slavery has never changed. It, things have new veneers now. We have a lot of gadgets and, 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 and creature comforts, um, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of screens and uh, Internet's great and um, phones and you have, you know, whatever. We have all that stuff. But um, if you take all that away, um, we're, we're the same country we were back in uh, 1776, back in 1861, mm -hmm. uh, back in 1863. Um, if you really... I mean, God, I, I, I've only done, uh, what, two, two days of research, maybe, and it, it's just so abundantly clear and, like I said, sobering and very depressing. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, th think about it like this. This country has never, outside of its original revolution, which founded the country, essentially, uh -huh. it's never had any other revolution. Like many countries, like older countries and some not so old, they go through periods of like social upheaval and revolution. Look, look, look at Russia. See this. Look at France, right? Yeah, France, France go too. through the old vest, right? Yeah. And like, so when we go through like massive revolutions like that, it literally changes the game. But the reason why we have, like, as you noted and pointed out, the reason why this game has never changed because the power structure is still. Rather, it was a pre, uh, pre-Civil War, post-Civil War, pre-New Deal, post-New Deal. The power has always held, been held of the, the elite and ruling and wealthy. That's yes. never changed. And yes. if their wealth came from slavery before, they're gonna, they, it's not like when the Civil War happened, we said, oh, all right, all you fucking slave owners who post in the South and North, you have to like give up all your money. No, they kept their money. <laughs> they just couldn't have slaves anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're butthurt about that. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yep, that's you know, it. We, we're we're going to have to pay for our labor now. We can't keep every damn penny uh, that that, that uh, flows into our, yeah. our coffers. And then when, when the French had their revolution, their rich and wealthy literally got their heads cut off. Yes, I wish we did that here. And when and when the Russians had their revolution, their rich and uh, wealthy literally were kicked out of the countries or were murdered and executed. And when the Cubans we, had their revolution, they also kicked out their wealthy. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I am such a fan of uh, exiling these sociopaths who are in our government right now and who have been for the past like 40 years. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, and this is why I feel so depressed. Right. Because um, I don't feel like um, they we. We, we didn't get another FDR this time, right? They didn't care enough. Nobody cared enough. Like, I feel like- um, we just had, Aaron, we just had to beat Trump. <laughs> no, 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 but, but understand. No, no, I'm not I'm, being facetious. No, no, I, I get that. But just like, really, I, when it comes to the brass tacks of it, right? Um, in, in the darkest moment, it, it, exact moment like right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at, look, look at what happened at the dawning of the 20th century here in America. So. Um, right at the beginning, we have um, uh, World War One, right? 1914 and 1918. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right after that, as soon as 1918 hits, you have the uh, the the influenza pandemic, um, which killed a third of the uh, freaking population, right? Mm -hmm. Which which started in Kansas. They called it the Spanish flu, but it started in Kansas. Um, so epidemic, um, same thing. You have the second wave. You have people who didn't want to follow the quarantine measures, blah, blah, blah. Exact same freaking scenario. So, and then what happens immediately after that? Um, you know, there, there was a, almost a decade of, you know, recovery. But, I mean, damn, a, a third of the world's population died off. Um, a, a majority of that, like today with coronavirus, um, was uh, the U.S., I think that I think the U.S. contributed to damn near six hundred and fifty thousand of those deaths alone, right? Right. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine, especially with the technology of the day, um, that it took a while to for for the global economy to recover from that. So um, as soon as that happens, um, <laughs> stock market crash, nineteen twenty nine. Right. Damn it. Okay. So we we know the effects of that. And then what was happening right then, just like right now, we're dealing with global warming. Uh, during the time of the stark market crash, they were dealing with the Dust Bowl, 
uh, one of the worst uh, droughts in um, the recorded history on this continent, right? Mm-hmm. And just like right now in 2020, all of those, all of those factors just um, it, it forced the government to come in to take action, right? Uh, FDR, it, he he's the outlier in our history, and and, and I, I say this because real real, um, real quick, I want to just kind of circle back to uh, my earlier point as to why the, uh, he's the out or FDR and that administration and the New Deal is the outlier in in U.S. history. Nothing else has fundamentally changed. This is so true. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, in my inquiries, um, I'm looking for, you know, I was looking for uh, more information uh, on any uh, landmark uh, health care um, successes and or tragedies um, that befell America during the, uh, Clinton's first administration, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, during, during his first term, because uh, my brain was not yet mentally uh, mature enough to understand was happening at the time um i was i I didn't really become like i I didn't comprehend what was going on until his second term in office so uh, that's when i started paying attention to to politics um so i I, there's uh, there's a lot that i missed out on there and um there's not a lot that is readily available during that period Uh, and i was just looking for some tribal knowledge or something right and someone told me hey look at um like at between like the 1950s and the 1960s, how uh, public community health centers started disappearing. And I have to say, hey, you know, I'm looking back here and, um, you know, even in the 1800s uh, and right around World War II, uh, the U.S. was having this exact same problem. As, uh, you know, like I'm, t- I'm trying to explain to that. And then they even brought up another period and kind of, you know, uh, it, it pointed things at Reagan. And I'm like, no. Uh, understand this problem predates both of those events right Uh, both of those uh, periods in american history like understand that private health care has always been the predominant um the predominant method of health care delivery to the uh working class or you know to average citizen in the u.s with very little funding uh, by the government to uh, state services to help fund voluntary, usually voluntary uh, compulsory um, uh, health services and or insurance, right? So essentially, we didn't, we didn't even, we, we've never had a nationalized system here while the rest of the developed world had moved on to some variation of that in sure. the 1800s. Do you know, right? is there like a specific kind of like organization or group that was kind of like cementing that idea because like we can talk about our um uh like oil our, our wars for oil and like political power that way and well and, and that's the private industry behind that so yeah 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 and i'm seeing in this too like this isn't an, a, a shift that happened in the 80s with reagan as far as that uh, marriage between private business and government that that has always been there it has mm-hmm. always been there that that's not that's 250 years old man that that has always like understand what i'm saying like i don't think people understand the gravity of status quo in this country and the role that it has played we've progressed n- not an inch other than technological gadget advancements mm-hmm. and, and we could be much further if certain private interests right didn't uh, lobby to keep certain technologies uh, that are safer and, you know, less profitable uh, off of the market, like electric cars, which we had since what's the 70s, and the oil industry lobbied to, what, when was the first time you really seen uh, mass production of uh, um, electric cars? 2008? And I'll yeah. let you make your point right now. Yeah, but like, that's literally, they, they've killed like even patents when people come up came up with electric cars and i think even a hy- hydrogen cars as well mm-hmm. uh, but like it there's there's some factors behind why america didn't have the same sort of like revolutionary upheavals that other countries did so if you look at prior to the uh 20th century maybe even the 19th century america and i'm talking about like all the americas north and south they mm-hmm. all had a I mean, we're fairly like isolated because it was so hard for like other people from other countries to travel here. And that was actually a, oh, 
having a package delivered. What? <laughs> <laughs> My friend's coming by. Uh, That's why. We're, we, because we were so isolated, like when you look at the French Revolution, when you look at the Russian revolutions, these are countries that are literally like right next to each other. Yes. And they can like easily traverse. So it's like you get immigrants coming from one country to another country, being displaced by war, being displaced by poverty. So it's more of a, it's literally a bigger melting pot. It's just the pot's a lot bigger. And yeah. of course we can, you can segment it by like all territories and borders, but at least they're all connected. We're literally an island. And that affected us all the way up until like World War II. Because yeah. the, while the rest of the war was like inflamed and th through Africa, through the Euro European zone, America could just say like, we'll stay out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, 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 we took that isolationist approach uh, back then until, yeah, yeah, the, yeah uh, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah. And so like that, abort, that afforded us, or not us, but that afforded the people in charge the luxury of kind of like not really having people around to shake things up. Uh -huh. If that makes sense. So like in Europe, yeah. like if if France had a revolution, Germany felt it. <laughs> it's like right uh -huh. next door. So if like, and that's why we're so in this country, specifically during the, uh, the Cold War and the Reagan era, we're so quick to vilify Cuba, uh, Venezuela, all these South American countries. Yo, yo, it, it, and they and had that's their the thing. Yeah. And that's the thing here, like, uh, no, no, notice this shift, like, right, I still maintain to this day that we have never needed them. Uh, the U.S. has never needed the military in such capacity as it is today and with such fun, egregious funding as it, as it has today uh, since uh, World War II. And, like, you, there's, there's this shift, right? And, uh, and I don't know if it was sort of an overreaction to Germany, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. part one, World War I was them. Uh, and then part two, World War II. And then after World War II happens and uh, we sort of abandon this sort of isolation of this approach and we become this, we go on this world hardcore, yeah. it, no, not, not not just world police, but I mean, sure, that was the veneer, uh, I'll say, right? Like, I think that's the campaign, that's the feel good uh, propaganda that they want to put out. But it, let's call it what it, what it is. It became a hardcore imperialist campaign that's still yeah. going on today. Why, 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 like the shift, right? Why the shift? We didn't operate in that manner before World War II. Like, what the fuck happened? That's that's definitely also part of the neoliberal agenda as well. Oh man, uh, gl gl globalization. Uh, excuse me, globalization, mm -hmm. perhaps. Right. Okay. Ah, because that's what it wants. It wants to specifically under an aspects of capitalism it wants to spread its influence by saying like hey we can all be on board with the like hey we're prosperous you can be prosperous too it's kind of like a it's like a uh, pyramid scheme <laughs> mm -hmm. where it's like these people selling you on something want you in the game but they want to keep you not at the same level as them they want to keep you at the bottom of the rung of the pyramid and they encourage mm -hmm. you to go get other people to join that same pyramid but also keep them below you mm -hmm. So that I can, so whoever's that initial seller can stay at the higher rung of the pyramid. Mm. So, uh, oh man. Um, it's, the, 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 this moment in time really is like that shift seems sort of nebulous. Cause yeah, like, you know, you, you can say, yeah, this was sort of the neoliberal shift. Um, but what can, like, who can we really attribute this to? That, I don't that think it's the who, I think it was just forces of, uh, global dominance and power. Okay. Uh, so like, I'm justified in feeling that way as far as it being like sort of nebulous, because like, at least with Reagan it is, it's pretty, there's a pretty universal consensus with the shift with the Democrats and Reagan and like, you know, wh why we are here, where we are now in mm -hmm. 2020s America. Yeah, yeah, that one's hard to pinpoint. Though. And and another one people pointed out is that look at the what happened. I, and this even ties to my earlier point about us being isolationist. When World mm -hmm. War II happened, Europe was fucking devastated from Britain to all the way through uh, Italy and like the what later became the uh, I can't think of the term for it now, but like Yugoslavia and all that stuff. They were all affected, and they were all like bombed the hell because of yeah. the approaching war effort from the Nazis. But we didn't. I mean, we got attacked on Pearl Harbor, but that's it. 
yeah we, we we didn't suffer industri industrial that's the when we when our industrial age came through during the 50s yeah it, 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 era, we fucking ramped up to like incredible levels that the other yes. the other countries were just catching up to us uh -huh. yeah it gave us yeah. a tremendous head start for that and, and, and you know what the fuck attributed to that uh it get, dishing out a little equality to get, to, if women going into the workforce right yes um it, right like come on man like god just and, and, look, the, look and the, you know we got a little piece of that pie and we as in black folk got a little piece of that pie too because uh -huh. the, the 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 uh the army wasn't integrated but because there are women working in workplaces and they're like well we still need people to do some of these other jobs and it's like we got some jobs that that well as well then when white men started coming back we started getting kicked out of those things as well but once we got a taste of that and thanks to new some new deal policies which we were able to participate in that's what created rise of the civil rights movement it was like hey it was good enough back then why is it not good enough anymore we're we're men we're people too we have families we would deserve uh -huh. it. it all helped and that's another reason why they like the powers that be today don't want to create social programs and welfare programs and things to level the playing field because once but, the playing field level we all know like we all have a shared stake in this you can't oppress me anymore yeah yeah and yeah and exactly and i and i'm looking at uh, uh nira and i'm looking at the uh, nra not 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 the uh not the nra that you guys may think uh this is the um oh man i, I have to bring up my notes here g g give me just a second uh -huh. um <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, this is the National Recovery Administration, which was part of the New Deal. Um, this was the this was the most progressive legislation the U.S. Uh, government has ever implemented. It was the only legislation in U.S. history that has ever specifically looked out for the working class. Right. Yeah. Um, the National Recovery Administration is not only responsible, and I'm dipping, I mean, I'm giving you a little preview here for anyone who's listening. Um, I'm gonna list you some of the stuff they gave us here. Um, right, so in, in order to eliminate the cutthroat competition of capitalism and to even that playing field, um, it, it helped to establish certain fair practices uh, within uh, the, private industry. It helps set minimum prices, right? There's some um, economic uh, regulation going on there. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, a more powerful um, retailer or, you know, whoever, a more powerful uh, corporation couldn't say undersell their product for a competitive advantage. So they said like minimum prices, right? that a product could be sold to make sure that everybody had an equal chance of making the exact same uh, money. Um, yo, uh, they set the first minimum wage standards, right? 25 cents at the time. Hmm. And um, it, it also it, it also set the uh, grant, or, or excuse me, the father of our 40 hour workday, the 44 hour workday. And get this, get this though. Guess who did it first? 40 hour workday right right before right before the riots started happening oh for london london b johnson ford motor company in uh, freaking 1926 sir gotcha yeah what the heck man see because right? they probably knew that uprising that uprising was coming yeah, obviously, yeah, they, they knew, yeah, if they wanted to stay in business, they had to, you know, support like Black Lives Matter or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, hey, if you're if you're a savvy businessman, do what you got to do. If that yeah. means giving people but, equality, but Aaron, please but Aaron, give them equality. But Aaron, uh, but Aaron, rights do nothing. Rights never help. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Hey, just like uh, a union of people called corporations keep preaching to us that unions are bad. Mm -hmm. Seems to be doing them very well. Mm. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah, it's just wow. Just like I said, very sobering. That um, I mean, when yeah, guys, when 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 people say status quo, once again, you're using it too lightly. We we are talking about since 1776 when this uh, concept of capitalism um, was introduced by this certain individual 
uh, Mr. Adams, yes, Mr. Adam Smith. Understand, well, what, what, Brian, remind us again, what year was the country founded? 1776. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. 2020, nothing has changed. Joe Biden tells us that nothing will fundamentally change. He didn't tell us um, that, he told the people who needed to hear that. Yeah, yeah, that, that was signaling uh, all the way, and it was as clear as day. Mm -hmm. um, speaking, of, speaking of Joe, I just saw on Twitter there was a video of him and in, uh, introducing a man in blackface from the 80s. <laughs> I seen that. It, it was the, the, the Michael Jackson turning into Prince. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm like, I saw that. I'm like, this fucking country is so goddamn insane. If Bernie Sanders had a video like that, the media would have had a field, not a field day, a field week on that. Maybe a month. Maybe a year on that. Because it's like, how can you, like, when they're already using the justification that, like, some ideas are old and we don't want old white men in charge and, like, what are we doing? We need to move forward. We need to do progress. But then, like, because, like, I, I the media is fully responsible for this because I've never yes. seen this. I've never seen it. And I know they knew about it because somebody oh, had yeah. them known. So the fact that they, we don't, this was not an issue that was brought up during the primary, during the campaign. They hid that. They held that under the fucking rub just so they can have fucking joe biden get in there I'm for like, decades this, yeah this is disgusting from the democratic party and its little media fucking cohorts because now well, this is going to be perfect ammo for the republicans hey, hey they're all part of the same club they're all part of the what would you say about uh, uh hillary clinton and uh trump's donors being like getting yeah People, yeah, we talked uh, about donations, bribes. We talked about that last time. I'll look it up as soon as I finish my point. But uh, yeah, it was Donald no, Trump. No, that, 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 that was the point. That was the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'll, I'll make it even clearer because I just love the kind of like the parallel of it. Donald Trump's number one uh, corporate donor, and I'll look up the name of this group. His number one corporate donor gave him, I think, $6 million to his campaign. Uh, Hillary Clinton's number three corporate don donor is the exact same uh, corporation, they gave her also six million dollars or something mm. of that effect. So mm. like they don't care who wins. It's just like they win either way. Yes. So the, so no, Hillary Clinton had two more organizations that gave her more money. She raised more money in that election, two thousand sixteen. But like mm. they just whoever this corpor corporation just said like eh, give them the exact same amount of money. They'll listen to us either way. If Donald Trump listens to us more fine if hillary clinton only gives us a third of the time also fine it's no skin off our backs so we can just give away millions like it's fucking candy yeah and yo and, and, and this is and this is a problem with with i think our political appointment schedules and uh like ah right so and, and so and this this is what maintains this system so for the most part and i'll get on congress pretty soon Oh, I for the most it. part. Sorry, real quick. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it's OpenSecrets.com. Look it up. Uh, Renaissance Technologies. They gave both candidates fifteen million dollars. Mm. Both of them, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing that uh, quite a bit lately, especially uh, for the twenty twenty campaign. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, because yeah, I was kind of shaming some of these places, and then realizing that they also split damn near down the middle as well. It's usually like a uh like a 40 something split 40 60 split um to to both parties uh democrats and 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 republicans but, but i yeah you know where i stand on that mm -hmm. I, I think people i think everybody sees that now um yeah that it's all the same club right um there's no denying that now to, to, to do so like you you're either one just you, you were born and lived under a rock on mars um all this time or what's sad what's saddest about that even these uh democratic voters who support the blue no matter who camp the joe biden camp specifically they fully they won't acknowledge that but then also don't deny it either like they, the only the reason they don't like donald trump is because of the cover the veneer is like he's being rude quote unquote but they don't mm -hmm. have any actual critique about what he represents or he's sometimes not even his policies they're just like oh he says mean tweets 
what oh, policies? Or he has small hands and he's gross. I'm like, yeah, all that's true, but that has nothing to do with like what he actually like. All the policy, all his worst offensive policies, you can point to during the previous administration, the Obama administration. It's like Obama opened the door for that. Yeah. I, I I I used an analogy a little while ago. It's like whatever Obama like creaked open the door for, like NSA spying, drone bombing, kids in cages. The Obama Trump just came and kicked open the door. The door was already open. It's not oh, like yeah. he had to take any effort in opening that door. It would have been nice if someone like after the Bush administration, Obama like came through with a welding torch and like bolts and just like shield that door shut. And then Trump would have to come over, come through with like a torch to open it and like cutters. And then he'd have a lot more work to open that door. But guess what? Obama just left it cracked open because yeah, Obama yeah. Was a good guy, that whole bullshit. Yeah. And then we're, we're talking about a comic, a common fucking low level thug who, um, he, he, Jesus Christ, he, he gets into uh, this position. And because he's not a career politician, he doesn't have the etiquette. He doesn't have the training in the political theater, uh, which is why he's seen as so rash and um, offensive. And uh, yeah, oh God, I don't want to. I, I want to vomit. Yeah, like the Republican um, or whether the Never Trump Republicans. He's offensive yeah. with that sensibility because, like, hey, we're not supposed to say that part loudly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like Trump, uh, and Trump is such a like a mess at this. He's literally now admonishing his own Supreme Court because of their ruling on DACA and I guess uh, protecting uh, uh, not having not having LGBT people uh, fired from their Yo, hey, LGBT. Hey. like great things, but like he's like this Trump's not conservative. Uh, this court's not conservative enough. Okay, hey yo, yeah. L- L- LGBTQ community, we love you. We really do. Um, we we are huge uh, fans and advocates. Um, Got a mosquito on me. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, um, we um, I, we're, we're so glad for this. It's a very monumental moment for you. Yes. Um, yeah. It is fantastic. Um, I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, and I will get the uh, I'll get some citations for you, um, and and put them in the link in the description for uh, today's quad. But do you do you know what was also included in that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the uh, the devil in the details was that um, they also approved a oil pipeline to go through the Appalachian Mountains. Lovely. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're going to be polluting more of our um, beautiful natural what, resources. What sense does that make? Either the the precision, the why is there just been about discrimination it has nothing to do about like what they always do in the this, man. And that and that's also what's so like okay, I'll, I'll get to that point too, but I just want to like finish up. It's like this is the core difference between uh, like people like Trump and people like even the corporate Democrats who are just paid to lose. Like Trump says, this court's not Republican enough. We need more conservatives on the court. Uh-huh. You never hear a Democrat in office, specifically Obama, Obama, I don't even think Clinton would have been like if the court didn't rule like they're like liberal court didn't rule in their favor they would you never hear them go like uh this court's not liberal enough we need to get more people in the seat they would, <laughs> they would never say that they would just like well you know the, the will of the court had its due and like we respect that trump doesn't respect yeah. that shit he's just like no nah, it's not it's not enough <laughs> well you know that that's kind of part and parcel with the gop anyway the, the democrats yeah. have always had this sort of false sort of uh civility and digni- dignified tradition like get, get over these fucking optics like you know just it's played out man yeah it's played out. yeah and so like the the point you just raised about how yes we get a uh, uh more uh equality in the workspace where you can't just fire someone for who they are uh but then like what's that have to do with like raiding the appalachian mountains it has nothing to do but it's always these poison pills that are put in it's not even a bill it's a court ruling that's why i don't understand that yes yeah it's like yeah. it's like if we got roe v way but they're like ah but you also know what and you can and you could throw a mexican out if you don't like agree with like them speaking language in the english speaking country quote unquote uh-huh. <laughs> it's like what does that have to do with the other it's nothing to do with anything 
Yeah, dude. It's the the the, the breadcrumbs, like they 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 really seem to save those those breadcrumbs, right? Those social equality breadcrumbs for when they really they really just excuse my language this episode, but when they're really just fucking us over or fucking over the earth. Um it's always something sinister be, be behind the silver lining, you know, or behind the wind that that's made public. Like, and, ah. and I wish I like, I was talking to somebody uh, a couple of months ago, right before we went into quarantine about mm-hmm. how I wish we had a, you and I were talking like, we wish we had someone who fought as hard as the Republicans fought, <laughs> but on our, on our end. And yeah. like, and I, I, I agree with that because like, the Republicans fight dirty. We need do. Democrats who fight dirty. That's why I like people like uh God, why am I forgetting her name? Uh, Rashida Tillip, where she was like impeach this motherfucker and she was like saying all these things that like and then like of course Nancy Pelosi and the other representatives like you're being too crass, you're being too loud, you're being too vocal, the Republicans are getting mad at you. I'm like, what? Who the hell cares? I want to rip their goddamn throat. That, that's very <laughs> telling. That's very telling of who they serve, man. Yeah. The yeah, Republicans are getting what? Fuck the Republicans. Yeah, that's that's been, and that's always been like one of Obama's chief failings. Is like initially when I caught on to that shit when he had a God, I can't remember. He had a I think she was a uh, Secretary of Labor, and she, Fox News found like some video of her talking about how like white farmers uh she had she had some comment about white farmers and fox news clipped out a part of that and they like vilified her as like some like racist or anti-racist or some shit like not anti-racist like reverse racist that's what they said (laughs) and like and and, like i think her whole point was more like white farmers get screwed just as much as black farmers but because they're white they don't like recognize the fact that they're being screwed that way uh-huh. and it was something to the effect if you look into the whole context like no she's ab- she was absolutely correct but you just took one part of it and made it seem like she was only she didn't give a fuck about white people uh-huh. yeah and it was like and and of course fox news like made hay out of that for like a week and they fired and obama fired her it was like instead of just saying like look these idiots are trying to get this woman fired the quote mining she's not she's not reverse racist she doesn't have any animosity towards white people you you all need to calm the fuck down no no she she was revealing trade secrets man (laughs) right come on yeah and then just like democrats are absolutely silenced but like they're paid to be that way so yeah it's so sad like you know i i would love that there's this beautiful um just rose colored glasses belief of the democrats just always being this uh social um like ah, goddamn they're so ineffectual uh this uh, a social ch- uh champion party and i mean you know, just looking at the civil rights just uh, segregate they back. back welcome back thanks <laughs> to hey where uh where did i lose you man i was going off on something yeah i'm i'm glad because like you we were just talking about like or at least last thing i said was obama firing of someone who worked under his administration because he's cowardly <laughs> okay um who i still can't find i was trying to look up her name oh okay okay i'll find it just keep going yeah um shirley sherrod that's it i just found it Okay, and what was the offense again? Uh, okay, so I'll go to Wikipedia. Shirley Sherrod was fired from her appointed position as Georgia State Directory of Rural Development for the United States Department of Agriculture. The firing was an administration reaction to media reports on video excerpts from her address to an event of the uh, National Association of Advancement of Colored People in AACP in uh, March 2010 and commentary posted by conservative blogger uh, Andrew Breitbart, that fucker, on his own. Uh, Based on these excerpts, the NAACP condemned Sherrod's remarks as racist, and the U.S. government officials called on the official to resign. However, a review of her full speech showed that the excerpts had been selectively edited and that her remarks, understood in context, were about the importance of overcoming personal prejudice. I remember that now. Uh, the NAACP 
And White House officials then apologized for their earlier criticism. The United States Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Biz Vilsack, apologized for the firing and offered Sherrod a new position. Yeah, if I remember her speech now, it was more like she grew up in like a segregated South and she was afraid of white people. I think that was like the extent of it. And then they only quote mine that part. But then when she got, then the full speech was like, you know what? I, having worked in this position for a while, she learned like, like the white people, white farmers suffered similar adversities that uh, colored farmers or black folks had. So that was more or less what I remember from that fucking debacle. Yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah, no, I, I I remember leaving off saying um, that um, yeah, she was giving away trade secrets, so that that's why they got rid of her. But um, that they uh, just they always do that. Yeah, but like <laughs> we were just talking about how much the Democrats like to champion the the social aspect of like you know everything, but like that's a prime example. They fired a black woman for saying that like she used to be afraid of white people. How's, yeah. how's that championing anyone's social position? Uh huh. How, how does Ben Carson? <laughs> um, head, of, head of HUD. God, don't get me started on that goddamn motherfucker. The worst. Slaves to power, man. Slaves to power. It, it's also the grossest representation of tokenism, too. It I mean, is. Yeah, like every, corporations do this. The most like power structures end up revolt, re reverting to some form of tokenism, but it's the grossest. Like he's literally, he was a brain surgeon. And it was like, Hey, you know about the blacks. I'm gonna put you in charge of like urban housing. Cause you're black. I'm like, if he made him the secret, uh, the surgeon general, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. Yeah. I, hate, I still hate him. I still think he's a prick, but at least that tracks. Damn. Uncle Ruckus is what he is. Yeah. And he took the job. <laughs> he wasn't. Well, why, why that. wouldn't he? Why, why wouldn't he? Like, he gets to go to the black tie events now, man. Mm. That'd be like if someone came to me and was like, I know you're black, so I'm going to make you the representative of basketball. I'm like, I am 5'7", and I don't, can't play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, may maybe Ben Carson, he's going to um, release a rap album once he... Um, uh... <laughs> Once he retires. Michael Brooks did an awesome... You have to look it up. Just look up Michael Brooks, Ben Carson rap. It's like the funniest thing. Okay, <laughs> I will. Me. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I think I kind of... Um, my memory banks is kind of pulling me back to what I was getting to with that too. Um, freaking <laughs> Ben Carson rapping. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they just... It's, it's, it's a club... It's a club. Um, yeah, just wow. Like I said, they, 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 um, the, the party that claims to be the advocate of the people, um, like, uh, yeah, that's what I was getting to that they were, um, they fought hardest against, uh, civil rights. They, they fought hardest for segregation. Um, 54 days or, or or against, against sub segregation. For, they fought for segregation hard. The Democrats. Yes. Oh, yeah, back um, in the day. Are they any effective now? No, of course not. Yeah, so, yeah. And, 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 yo, Biden. What was Biden? What did his crime bill do? Just... Increase the, uh, the prison culture and prison state. The Democrat, right? A modern-day Democrat um, who uh, committed the same exact act, right? Completely against Black people and did uh, everything in his power to oppress them even further. Um, that, that has not changed. That has, can, can you honestly say that has changed with the Democrats? Like, really? Oh, no, because, like, they, their donor base has main, main even during FDR's time, has maintained, it's been relatively consistent. Mm -hmm. even, if the, even if the sudden strategy happened, that just that was mainly an effect of the voters, not necessarily who the donors are. The donors, the voters shifted, not the donors. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just it's super sobering, man. Um, because it seems like like we awaken sort of in steps and. <laughs> <laughs> 
whatever you want to call it now um i understand there's some criticisms against the term woke now for whatever reason so there's got to be a problem with something i mean it's the same way there's like criticism against social justice warriors like it gets co-opted by people who aren't necessarily the best representatives and it kind of makes it all toxic yeah well we have a way of doing that with everything right Mm -hmm. anything and everything you got people uh geez in rage fits online because they feel that somebody who created something was benevolent enough and maybe uh preyed on in an opportunistic uh fashion by some corporation that made their idea mainstream that that person or said people owe them something uh, in their fandom and not understanding like yo be thankful that this guy introduced this idea anyway <laughs> george lucas um Mm. and that you had this for your entertainment for so long like you know like the, the sense of entitlement for nothing i don't know I'm, I'm ranting at this point i'm just i'm i'm rambling um it dude it's it's uh, i don't have hope or excuse me i don't I, I don't i haven't lost hope that the system can change it's just how do we educate the masses it's 250 years of this and the same percentage of the population seems to be well whatever psychological warfare the government and the elite has learned how to do on the citizens in the nation uh it's been working how do we how do we break that um yeah. and i will say and i will add too how do we re-inject empathy and humanity back into our society like how do we remember we're humans we're not hustlers we're not this pr- product culture freaking I mean, we're people right um well capitalism itself pre- preys upon like our more primal uh nature of competitiveness and survival which is also human uh the trick of it is that to provide alternatives because like if you're if I'm starving, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking murder someone or something to survive if necessary. Uh, if I'm content and happy, and you know, I'm not fearful of anyone coming to like murder me for the things I have, then we're all good. And I think what 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 we done what we've done in this country and under aspects of capital. I mean, you started off this conversation about that with the hierarchy of like uh, slaves and versus non slaves, essentially that exists mm-hmm. in this country, and how that division was created: who was a slave and who wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, set workers against workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if. I, I think like operating always under the aspect of scarcity and the zero sum, z- zero sum game mentality that persists in our culture is mm-hmm. that's why, again, that's why they don't want a Medicare for all system. They want healthcare to be competitive yeah, so that, yeah, so that mm-hmm. you know, you have the good healthcare. And if we have people dying in the streets, it's like, well, that's fine because you have the good healthcare and you're the deserving and you are of place in society. They never get people to understand like, Hey, that person is dying in the street from uh, cancer, coronavirus, what have you affects me mm-hmm. because we live in the society. <laughs> yeah. Well, certain people are insulated. Um, yeah. They believe they're insulated to a point and they be- try to make themselves as insulated as possible, which is why we have gated communities. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, but I mean, for the most part, they succeed because honestly, and once again, I, I, I'm not calling it. Uh, ain't a, this isn't a call to violence. Um, but like you said, other countries like France, like guillotines, they um, mm-hmm. it was just in, in Europe, what they, they they go to people's houses and pull them out and beat them. Um, corrupt politicians who screw them um people had literally went with pitchforks and freaking fire and uh, we don't do that here it is partly because of you know the advancements of uh weapons of death uh but like they they like you said they go through great lengths lengths to insulate themselves um like you, you really it begs to wonder why haven't we gone after them in this fashion and not necessarily to kill murder death kill but 
Um, I've always been a fan of taking the social paths and just exiling them somewhere. Uh, let's just, you know, get Disney to build an island somewhere look, and uh, stick them on it. They probably enjoy that. I mean, look at the arguments used for whenever uh, anybody, including Bernie Sanders, would talk about like raising the tax on wealthy people. What what's uh-huh. immediate? Like, they, I remember people using this argument four years ago. Immediately, those people say, if you raise taxes on them, they're going to leave the country. And I've always said. Let them. Let them. They can leave the country now. They have yes. all the money and access to in the world, and they, if they wanted to, they could just like, oh, I'm done with this country. I can. They already have like I'm sure all these people have multiple houses in multiple countries, and multiple vacation spots, villas, islands, wherever they they bought the stuff they want to go to. I'm saying if oh, yeah. you want to do business in this country with Americans for Americans, you got to play by our rules that benefit. Americans at the very least. Uh-huh. And if that's and that's too high a price for them, then go find somewhere else. This is when we can say, hey, all of those like all the Walt the Walton family, or the Bezos, if they don't want to do business in America, guess what? We'll find a smaller business and like bo- bolster them with the money that the tax breaks we could have been using to give to like Bezos. Yo, and I'm still fucking upset at the fact that Nestle, a Swiss-based fucking company, doesn't even operate out of this country, um, gets to claim rights to clean water. water. And yep. Flint, Flint, it's seven years. Seven years, right? Seven years. If, if, seven. if only that. Yeah, I feel like it's been like 14. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, so seven years that uh, the, the poor uh, people of Flint have been getting poisoned water into Nestle, this... Uh, company that i think they netted last year 32 billion 32 b b b really? 32 billion mm-hmm. from clean water that residents of flint michigan can't do so much as walk up to that freaking um to to the lake and and dip a glass in it because that would be considered theft on their own land in their own home and nestle has to deserve to sell that water back to them at a 300 percent markup and what's and- What's incredible about this, and this is part of the old adage, like what you do, what we do over there, we eventually do to ourselves. Think about uh-huh. what this country was founded with. It was founding with, founded with displacement and the kind of the taking and corporatizing of land from the indigenous people. And that's uh-huh. what we did to them. It was like uh, people set up fences and said, uh, you, this, this land that you've been living on your entire lives, you can't go to this part of the land anymore because now we claim it. We have deeds. Look. shit private beaches what yeah all that stuff it's just all the, like we start fencing things up and saying all right we can participate on that but you can't and eventually uh-huh. that became the landowners of so almost exclusively white and always wealthy landowners said start segmenting off against even like other white european immigrants like all right we can have this beach but you guys have to go to the, those other beaches so it's like yeah. that's been the nature of this this country and the nature of capitalism, just like sheltering and fencing things off and saying, "Hey, I know this is off. like no one like as indigenous people often say, it's like no one else owns the land. That's part of their culture. But like we said, nah, I can own it." <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, yo, yo, hey, I, and once again, the, I, oh my god, uh, I'm not trying to knock or offend anyone here, um, but but we know um, in, in Anglo uh, elite Anglo cultures um or the the elite uh uh, sectors i'll say of anglo culture um participated in in some incest right like they kept the they kept the royalty in the family um by 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 their choice yes not circumstances Correct. Like this isn't a knock. I'm not saying anything that's mentally wrong necessarily with white people per se. Well, that, um, that, and that just came from a side effect of, like, I, I'm sure if you can dive a little deeper in, like, royal European history, that, that probably also came from their own kind of, like, ins- the royal family just wanting to be as insular as possible to prove uh-huh. that they're better. It's the blue bl- blood, the pure blood fucking bullshit. Where the, yeah, my, my thing is, uh, aside from, you know, obvious um, just training at home, like, where, where this... Where does that superiority, because I don't really witness that in any other culture in the world, um, not to this degree, where does that superiority and where does that sort of unfetter just um, the degree that, that that fucked this world up, um, where does that come from? Because well, uh, it seems to be within a certain sector um, of humanity. 
right? Just historically. I think like, again, now, now I'm going to speak from ignorance because like, it's not like I'm super versed. In, well, like, I'm ignorance. already so, speaking like, from ignorance. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like I'm saying, like, it's not like I'm super versed in like the, uh, the Philippine Island historical culture or like many African cultural or even mm -hmm. Asia, China had like thousands of years. Like I'm sure they had some very similar aspects of their culture that developed at various points. Uh, I can, I, I'll, I'll speculate on the European side of it. If you look at just like, one of the things that was interesting taking like sociology, sociological and like anthropomorph, anth anthropology classes is mm -hmm. that it's interesting how your environment affects your culture. Mm -hmm. So if you think of like a, a South equate, uh, South of the equating, South of the equator cultures, it's like, it's usually hotter, usually more tropical. There's some, there's not like a lot of land mass in that part of the country, but it's greener and you can be spread out. So if you look at like at, in Africa, it's like, it's, it's very green. So yeah. there's, there's plentiful resources that way of just like, Hey, you can just hang out and live. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still warfare and fighting and tribalism as there was throughout human history across the planet. But like, you're not like up in everybody's business the same way you would be if you're up in the North where it's cold, frigid. Uh, there's not like there's seasons in which if you are outside, you will die. Mm -hmm. not, it's simply because not like, Oh, you fucked up. Like, no, you're just out in the elements and your body will freeze. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to like hibernate like a bear. And then when that, that almost forces your society together and you develop mm -hmm. like, certain rules of like this is how we behave this is how we can't behave because if we do if we go outside those rules we will die we're literally us against the elements and like what happened through that was two things it it both created the cultures that existed through that society but also created like their technological kind of like advancements where they like that's why like stone fortresses came from the north mm -hmm. and if you look at like fortresses and like like areas that are built in like southern hemispheres like they didn't have to build like giant monoliths like we had like the egypt uh the we had like the uh egyptian pyramids and then mm -hmm. we had like the uh pyramids in the uh, like the aztecs and like the incas and if you look at that that was probably like a thing of like ancient cultures that were cross-pollinating over that region you know during the pandemic yeah when it was like the island the land masses were closer together which is interesting but mm -hmm. what i'm talking about specifically like if you're in a cold area you need something like sturdy and warm to live in <laughs> so you build a, a fort you build a castle uh if you're in a warmer climate you kind of like need your space you gotta spread your legs a little bit because yeah you know, right on top of each other you're, you're that's body I, I need you to step away so we can chill out so uh -huh. it's going to be like more open air. It's like, again, like warfare and fortresses are built all over the place, but like the type of fortress you build, like what I noticed in African societies, because like similar to indigenous people, you can move around a little bit to also avoid monsoon season. So you yeah. can build permanent structures because uh, the resources weren't quite there for that. And it was unnecessary. It was like, well, mm -hmm. why build something permanent when it's just going to get washed away? Like when it rains too hard. True. So, so it's interesting how like culture is affected that. And, and because of that, the Europe, that and because of trade uh, with the uh, sections of like the, uh, the continent that they could have easy access to, like what is it now Northern Russia, uh, Asia, the Middle East, they all got to permeate. And we got like so, so, what's known as Sub-Saharan Africa got cut off by the desert. So the desert mm -hmm. was part of the traverse, thus we didn't get to participate in as many technological advancements as like the people in the north and the people in the east got to participate in because of trade routes. Yeah. So, so while they were sharing gunpowder and iron and all that stuff, we were kind of just left to where we were for thousands and hundreds of years, which was okay, but like clearly when they came down with their iron ships, we got fucking decimated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Same thing happened to the indigenous people here. Same thing happened to the indigenous people to the south and the people of the islands. Now, the now the people in the islands, like uh, the Filipinos, they had the advantage simply because it was an island, island. Like they 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 knew that land so well and it was like so impacted that like when the Spanish Spaniards came through, it was like you're wearing fucking giant metal suits and the tides coming and washing you away. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. so it was harder to conquer them for a while but of course obviously 
if we look at just modern warfare, of course, that didn't last long. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is, I mean, besides, uh, like I said, there's this uh, the, this greed thing that we, which I'm uh, referring to as our original sin, because it's honestly what's, it's the one thing we have not yet to overcome. Like you said, countless wars have been fought over our very existence, uh, over somebody wanting to have all of everything, mm-hmm. right? Or a group of people who want to have all of everything um, and not leave any for the others. Like, I, I, this is really getting into the philosophical, and I know like none of us are experts on this, but my thing is like, why the inclination to uh, take those advancements and use them uh, for purposes of invasion uh, uh, instead of just assimilation and hey um, let's you know new culture mm-hmm. um, learn something let's uh, see what how, how it looks like so you, 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 they, they want that place for a reason um, I guarantee you if it wasn't for that culture being in that region to build it up the way that that culture built it up it wouldn't be as appealing to whoever wants to invade it so yeah, so well, sometimes it's, they, they invade it for the resources that are there and the culture just happens to be in the way and they'll just take the things that they have, like the gold or whatever, just like, ah, it's here and we like the shiny things and we can decimate their culture and prove that we're superior. It's that greed thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once again, and, just... And just the l- lack of respect and fear. Because like if you if we imagine if like like we like Black Panther the the movie mm-hmm. had a non colonized section of Africa that was technologically advanced I like to think imagine if we had an America that was instead of the the European settlers coming here and just decimating the indigenous people but they came here and like integrated with the indigenous people just like actual like sharing of resources sharing of knowledge sharing of technology and we lived the way they lived a lot of people would have not died so uh suddenly i'll tell you that yeah and like our culture would look way different like you, you first and foremost you wouldn't have like fucking white karens coming through and saying like this is america speak english and, like we probably would be speaking english or we'd have some like mixture of like the indigenous languages that are spoken here and english oh for sure yeah It could have been that easy, but I don't, yeah, dude, just got this inclination to just somebody has to dominate, somebody has to be in control. It's for the sake of profit, you know. Um, I, I my brain doesn't wrap around it, but we're not sociopaths, so I imagine that's why our brains don't wrap around it, or, or yeah, well, like I'll, I'll also, also put it this way like you were mentioning how the Puritans were like the whatever. They had some wealth and they were middle class, but they weren't at the position they thought they should be back in Europe. So they came uh-huh. here. I imagine the people who came with them, not all of them were in like great shape either. So they had they, the, the people in charge of that expedition clearly manipulated a group of people because, you know, they're Puritan, so they could do that <laughs> into, coming, into coming with them for whatever rules they, and they, that they set up in place. Uh-huh. And those people were like, well, I'm now like in some cases they were literally indentured servants. It was like, well, I have no choice. I have to follow the rules you say. So yeah, you tell me that I have to hate these other people who are here first and they're indigenous. Then I I have to hate and fear them, regardless of my personal inclination. Maybe I would get along with these people because, but, but out of ignorance, not ignorance as in they're stupid, just like they don't know who these other cultures and groups are. Exactly. They're, they're just locked into like the binary of like, well, I don't know that. So I have to fear that. Does that work? And my master tells me I should fear them. And my master puts food in my mouth. So what am I going to do? Go against bite the hand that feeds me. That's that, that's that word again, binary. That keeps coming up so much in these uh, conversations all across the board, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because like complexity is the enemy of control. <laughs> you you know what it is because for every every tactic that has been used against um just uh the the, the citizens here or the working class um every time I, I i say that is very um 
that is very sophisticated, but each of those systems are very simple. Mm-hmm. Just that that's usually my exact framing sophisticated but simple. Yeah. Like, respect, wow. And respect the police. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. That, it's like, why? Because if you want criminals to run amok. What are you talking about? Well, if we don't have police, but like the police are performing criminal behavior. Well, yeah, oh. but like if we don't have the cops here, then the criminals are running amok. Well, the cops are being the criminals. Yeah, but like you gotta have the police. And like it's this circular craziness which they can't get out of that binary. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it, it goes back to that problem, which I say is the biggest epidemic in, in, in this country is that people aren't taught to question anything or to have any critical or independent thought. Mm-hmm. Um that's the biggest failure. Uh, well, in well, once again, in in an ancient tactic, right? Education, information has always been on the attack by the elite, by the uh, ruling class, by kings and queens, their book burnings, um, you, you name it, and ban it. They still ban uh, certain manuscripts in certain uh, uh, regions of the world or movies, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> 2020, um, 1776, right? You were established, right? 1776, yeah. Yeah, um, st- still, still happening here. Still ha- ha- hasn't status quo. Status quo hasn't changed. It is exactly what the conservative ideology um, represents. Mm-hmm. It, there's, there's not even a question about it. If you look at the definition, you could we, we, Wikipedia it, whatever. That is in their ideology. Like, understand what you're what you're signing up for when you. Uh, say you're a Democrat or a right wing or GOP or conservative or evangelical Christian, whatever. This is what you're signing up for. Absolutely no advancement to human society. Because, I mean, literally, uh, conserve means you want to preserve and not change. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, who, who there wants there that some, shit? There is some good, con- uh, there is some good conservation if we're talking about like, you know, making sure we have clean water. <laughs> you, know, you know what? If you're going to do it, go all in, do it right, be Amish. Yeah. Okay. You, you would think that they be would point, they'd notice that consistently. Like, hey, I want to conserve. So I'm going to keep my spirit yeah. in place and keep the land as it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, de- definitely. They, they, they wouldn't be um, abusing the stock market to uh, invest in and make a, a profit off of Zoom. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> in, in video conferencing software while there's a global pandemic going on. Right. You know? I, mean, I mean, I've heard many people say this and it's correct as like the environmental movement should not be bipartisan. It, that's not a bipartisan issue. That's an earth it, and humanity issue. It, it's become there's, one in this country for sure. Like last I checked, we hadn't found any habitable planets that we can yet get to. Um, we still haven't sent people to Mars, and that's going to be a suicide trip for anybody who goes. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Why is everything goddamn politicized? Why are all aspects of life, especially in this country, fucking politicized? That's my thing. Again, like, it's more to life. Complexity is the enemy of control. Yeah, you're right. Simple the red and blue and Dems Republicans. <laughs> like, I always had this problem. This is... even... Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I always had this problem even back during the Bush era because people like, the Republicans are the worst. I'm like, you know, it's conservatism that's the problem. Because even back then, I knew about the Southern strategy. I'm like, you know what? If if you send me back 200 years or 100 some odd years, I'm like, ah, Republicans aren't bad in comparison to the Democrats <laughs> of the time. Where I was like, the Democrats are saying like, you are you're a three fifths of a person are a slave. Mm-hmm. At least the Republicans aren't trying to enslave me right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the situation also sort of runs parallel now. Right. Right. Um, Trump, Trump's a terrible person. Terrible, terrible fucking person. He's locked uh, kids up in cages, separated them from their families. Um, he um, he tried to impose a Muslim ban. <coughs> Excuse yeah, me. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, immediately in his, like, almost first two months in office. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and and he called Kaepernick a son of a bitch, right? <laughs> yeah, 
Right. I've never he seen wasn't him. protesting the right way. Mm-hmm. He, he he's even discriminated against black folks in this country, right? We 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 know about the uh, uh, his apartments and and the applications. Mm-hmm. I have not, however, publicly seen Trump um, go after like really attack black people. He hasn't done that. Um, from what I've seen, ha- have I missed something? Where where he's like consistent. Uh after black people I mean, and that yeah, display. yes he has and uh i mean there's the this the central park five case which is that that okay yeah that that yeah, there, yeah there, there's that. i mean there's Thank a shit whole country's comment as well and we know who he was talking about because he even, yeah like, named some african countries by name okay he, they, he's he, no fan of black folk but he's that, but just like most republicans they're like i'm not racist i have a black friend mm-hmm and now once again well so and but but once again um republican um you're right democrats can do that too i mean we saw the uh the kente cloth <laughs> more no 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 it, it, it's not even that it's not even that like the, the the point i'm trying to get is 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 to uh demonstrate this parallel between your, the point you just made mm-hmm. um so Okay, yeah, we have that. Um, well, what legislation has he passed in the U.S. to um, hurt blacks in particular, or to oppress us even further? No, uh, n- nothing I, good for our particular. Yeah, I, I can't name any. Uh, you know who did? Joe Biden. Yeah, crime bill. Mm-hmm. But like, you can, but you can say the same. Like, but you can say that about Joe Biden as well. Like Joe Biden didn't come out saying, I want to get those blacks in prison. He just applied a general crime bill that affects criminals. And like Trump started his administration with being the law and order president. Uh, and, and then like you can, but then you can point to him getting rid of, uh, getting rid of uh, Neil's on wheels as like this probably disproportionately hurting people of color and black folk. Poor people. Yeah, yeah. Poor people. But you know what? That, that, that was a poor thing. Yeah. Um, and his 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 supporters saw that real quick. Yeah, um, then, I felt so bad for them. Yeah, and then <laughs> like, and then same thing with Biden. It's just like you can you can point out like, well, that's a quote unquote criminal thing. And of course, that also hurts disproportionately hurts poor people. Um, who, who has a longer record of doing shit like that? Oh, though? Biden, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and and, and has had more power to do it, like. Trump exactly. discriminating against people in his hotels. Yeah, fucking sue his ass and he should have been in jail a while ago over this stuff. But he wasn't he wasn't representing our government. Mm-hmm. Biden was. It, so he, it, to me, he's more responsible. Yeah, yeah. Because even now, like, I can't really blame Trump for doing much more than being laissez-faire and status quo. He's um, mm-hmm. right in the tradition of this country, right? Absolutely. Racist, uh, capitalist, um, fraud, um, you yeah, name that, it. That's why when people say things like he is in, uh, what do they say, not in, to normalize Trump, but when they, when they imply that Trump is like an aberration, like mm-hmm. he's different than everything this country's represented, I have, immediately have to check. Oh, that. he's, like he's is, the poster boy. Yeah, he is the country's <laughs> id. He is the identity of the country. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you get, everyone let that shit slide for at least through our entire lifetime, if not before. Apparently, this guy had just skated through. Man. Yeah, he should have been in jail a long ass time ago. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm still like, I thought it was weird with the whole Ronald Reagan thing, but um, Trump, goddamn it. Like, you know, Ronald Reagan was a goddamn puppet. Trump mm-hmm. just, goddamn, really? Like nobody just stomped this fool out a long time ago. Just really, because we never do. Like after the Bush administration, <clears throat> after the Clintons, or even after the previous Bush administration, this country, like I said earlier, we don't have revolutions. We never do the thing that, like, it, like even Obama when he got came in and people were calling for him to prosecute the Bush administration for lying us into a war. Yeah. He was like, I don't, his, his justification, because he believes this, is that like, I don't, we don't do that in this country because we don't throw our political enemies in jail. You do if they're, if they get what? involved in criminal behavior. Oh, what? Because, 
Oh, when they think of that, they think of South American countries where, like, look, we're going to prosecute the mm-hmm. previous administration. It's this constant turmoil. But, like, if they are criminal... People should pay for their crimes. Exactly. That's... And if we did that during the Reagan administration, when he gave uh, fucking drugs and to the inner city and to guns to the Contras, okay. it's terrorists, sure. we wouldn't be having this conversation 20, 40 years later with <laughs> Trump and Obama. Because, like, you hey, if hey. that's a crime, then presidents can't do that. They're not above the law. You know, to, to, to Reagan's defense, maybe his Alzheimer's did really prevent him from believing that's what he did. Well, I just thought the Contras was a pretty good vi- video game. Mm. You know, Nancy really likes to, like, play those <laughs> video games. <laughs> I like playing the little red guy. The little red one is always my favorite. And Nancy likes to go blue, but you know what? Now everyone's perfect. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because we never address the criminal behavior of the, the people in some of the highest offices in the land. Never. Because they, they, they're always like the next administration, even if they're from the op, quote unquote <clears throat> opposite party, they never want to address that. They like, oh, we look, we don't look, we look forward, we don't look backward. And even now with Biden running for office saying like Trump's a bad dude, he doesn't represent the country, blah, blah, blah. Have you heard Biden say we need to prosecute the Trump administration once? No, no, no. He just wants to bridge the gap between Democrat and what? Republic? I thought that was down there. Yeah, yeah. Bring the country thought, together is what they I say. Thought, I thought that would happen. <laughs> right. It's supposed to happen with uh, Biden in, in coming in office. Yeah. And like, that's the thing. It, it works two ways. Both they can, they don't want to get prosecuted for any of the awful shit that they also do, the Democrats. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other thing it does, it plays mm-hmm. into their cowardly nature. They don't want to make the Republicans upset, not just like the Republican, the establishment Republicans, but also Republican voters, because that would cause a conflict. If you oh. like, people are already talking about like starting Civil War Part Two if Trump just simply loses the election. If you threw his ass in jail after that, oh my, there would definitely be an insurrection. It ain't that serious. People just want to fucking go out and like purge. Yeah. That's what that is. And this is what drives me nuts. That's that's frustration. Yeah. And why people, people don't revolt when things are going well. And this is Mm -hmm. what drives me nuts about the the Democratic Party. I, if I was running for office and I had like, like if I was Bernie Sanders, just say if I was him, because Bernie didn't do this shit either. If I was Bernie Sanders, like, look, I want to give you all health care. Call, uh, access and affordable college not affordable as in like you take mm-hmm. out the, you know, the student loans like literally like if you want to and you get the grades you can go uh for free uh i want to end these stupid wars bring your children home stop wasting money stop giving money to the corporations and oil well, i want to get us on the renewable energy so like everyone can have a car if necessary just like not choose between getting the work and choking to death yeah and all these things <laughs> and I'm going to throw Trump, Trump in jail for giving all his buddies all this fucking money and not divesting from his from his industry. So he used the presidency to make himself rich, in addition to murdering a, an Iranian general and doing all these extra judicial war crimes. And uh, I'm still worried about that, man. I feel like that was his sort of um, safety deposit for a second term. Like, I, I feel well, like they tried it. No, no, you know, they, they, they tried it. Yes. Um, we have imminent threat, right? So that means uh, it's a very open-ended that, that leaves um, an opening for part two, right? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, part two may end up resulting in World War Three. Now, people say my, people, uh, I think I'm sort of radical in that thinking, but um, I'm, and this doesn't come from him. I've just recently been uh, um, watching Tom Hartman and he sort of has the same sentiments that like, um, even amongst all of this, the COVID and stuff that we're kind of losing sight at um, Trump's. I, I'm saying by uh, by August of this year, right? Maybe September, but um, that that was done for a reason. That 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 was done for a a reason. That wasn't just a, who can I test out a drone, right? No, no, um, no, we need to be paying attention to that, and that needs to that conversation needs to come back. No, I, um, I I agree with that. They're they're trying to ramp up for something. Whether they succeed or not, we haven't been able to tell yet. But like that was calculated. Was- that was calculated. And uh, on the on the program today, and once again, uh, this is a lot of as soon as that happened when he when he uh, assassinated that general, um, I, I thought too. Okay, here we go. World War Three. 
yeah. and not like you know us going into Afghanistan. No, like here we go, World War Three, because the U.S. has been chomping at the bit to go at uh, Iran since what the Bush administration, Bush, uh, Herbert Walker, or before. Yeah, definitely, I mean, definitely Bush Jr., but maybe easily Herbert Walker for sure. I know. I believe. Yeah, I believe in the eighties, like they they had been wanting to go after Iran. Mm-hmm. But um, like, understand and them to implicate. There's a reason why we haven't gone to war with Iran yet, people. Um, <laughs> Mostly thanks to Iran. Yeah, um, we've been we've been poking and, that bear forever, and they just been like, stop poking me. Yeah, yeah, and and they and they didn't bite this time. But I feel like Trump is emboldened enough. He feels authoritarian enough, right? He's he's he feels like king right now. That he will push that even further I mean, if he also. If, the people in Iran, the government of Iran is not stupid. They're, they're a much larger country than uh, Iraq was, I think. Yeah, they're much larger than Iraq, but they also understand the war between Iraq, uh, uh, Iran, sorry, Iran and America. We fucking destroy them. True, true. But, 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 but what do you do at some point if, if, if they're attacked again, right? Yeah. Do, do, I mean, do they just accept that, right, in such a very uh, small who, period of time? Yeah, who right? would? Yeah, at some point the the pe- they're pe- they're answerable to their mm-hmm. so we, even if it is a dictatorship. The people there is like, why you keep letting these people bomb us? And to, you know what? And, and let me say this too. And let me say this too, because this is something that often people don't seem to address too often. And once again, a testament of the power of media and propaganda uh, in any country, uh, the U.S. included. Okay, so dictators, uh, co- communism, period. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. communism. Period. Uh, we the, our only view, our only optics of communism in the United States have always been uh, accompanied with visions of uh, dictators. You know, your uh, Castros and Mussolini's, um, your um, Stalin's, your yeah, yeah, um, your yeah, chi- uh, China. Um, just, so, but my thing is, right, in, in all the wars that we see ourselves in, right, where we're going to spread democracy or to liberate, right, mm-hmm. for uh, stage a coup, let's be honest, stage a coup <laughs> and overthrow our government. Right. Um, in, in all these wars, broadcasting on our TV before we went over there to that country, um, if these dictatorships were so bad, if, if communism was so bad in this country and these people were suffering so much, why isn't the, the most warring nation in the world, in the history of the world, why wasn't our TVs growing up, Brian, full of civil wars and revolts and things happening against these uh, so-called t- tyrannical dictators who lead these communist populations? Because uh, going back to the point that you made, <clears throat> yes, they're dictators, they're terrible people. Mm-hmm. But they understand that if they want to maintain that dynasty or maintain that power until they die, mm-hmm. until they die breath, re- remain in that castle, that, that castle, excuse me, that they have to make some concessions and keep the people pleased to a certain extent that they do not revolt. Yes. Meaning that those people are getting what the fuck they need and I quite honestly probably living better than we are over here. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. But like, yeah, it, no. it comes down like even if they, you have to provide for their needs, or even like make it think like you're providing for their needs. And mm-hmm. so like, the same thing is said here. It's it happens in capitalists. Like, are are we really satisfied? Is that why we have all these mass shootings? I don't hear about any mass shootings in fucking Cuba. Yep. Yep. Just saying. <laughs> yep. There's how many, that, that how many have happened in Florida, which is like literally a few hundred hundred miles away. <laughs> Isn't Cuba like leading the U.S. in education or something like that? Then they just like try to crucify Bernie Sanders for stating that same thing that Obama stated during his administration. Yeah, their education is pretty high, but what's even higher is the fact that they're uh, they're medical. Uh, like they have yes, they have dispatched the rate. most. Yeah, and they dispatched the most medical personnel around the world to deal with COVID. I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Cuba, like yeah, and they've and they've been doing stuff like that for decades. Yes, yes. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're not going to occupy nations for oil and holding people at gunpoint and drone bombing them. No, they, <laughs> what, what country? I think I think there was one country in the past that Cuba was involved in, like a, a ground warfare and maybe invasion. But like within the past forty years, where has Cuba invaded? 
Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Either. I've never heard of it. Yeah, if, maybe if they were invading something, we definitely would hear about it. Yeah, um, it was some hardcore uh, deep state spy shit, right? Like Bay of Pigs Part Two, Bay in the City, or, or Pig in the City. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's Trump in the City. <laughs> Trump in the City. Oh man, talk about a pig with lipstick. Damn. God. Um. <laughs> and then again, like all the all the things that Obama did, like opening up normalized trade relations with Cuba, and then Trump comes in just like fucking wrecks that. Mm -hmm. just in democratic weakness when during the presidential <clears throat> campaign of this year when they're bernie sanders like hey cuba has some things that they kind of got together and every media pundit and even other democratic candidates on the stage like how dare you say cuba did anything good and castro is a good guy and it's like fuck you god damn it so again control uh nuance <laughs> are what i say complications is the enemy of control or something yes yeah. yes they, they're just like, Cuba's bad. Cuba's always bad. You can't say anything good about Cuba or Castro. Well, ever? Ever? Really? Apparently not. Damn. Yeah. I mean, like... They found the cure for cancer. And again, what, what was what's Castro's major crime? He kicked out all their fucking ruling class and oligarchs because he did it violently. Ooh. Yeah, and we wanted to be opportunists and take over afterwards like we did like fucking Puerto Rico. Yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. what's Haiti? What's Haiti's biggest crime? Oh, they kicked out all their ruling class and capitalists who were holding them in slavery. Ooh. Mm -hmm. They did it violently. We still have to forgive them for that. <laughs> right. It's like opportunistic imperialist bastards. Like, God damn it. it, it mm. You know, so um, at, at the beginning of our conversation, you know, I was stating that I was kind of like uh, in despair, dude. Um, because once again nothing has changed and you see we, we we see a repeat right now of um one of the most tumultuous times that we've had in in the u.s which was the the great depression which was sp uh, spawned by the uh market crash uh the stock market crash of 1929 mm -hmm. and we, we 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 were lucky enough right <clears throat> to have an fdr because had we not had an fdr um who actually uh not even you know, just the are but we also had a stronger left labor movement i mean there were communists in the country true true and and, and he was he was a big advocator of, of, of that or at um, least he listened to them i would say yeah hey, hey yo <laughs> who else who communist is a four-letter word here man so totally. one, once again thanks for, for cold war mm-hmm yeah, once again, for, for, for Roosevelt being, like, even ha ha having them, uh, giving them his audience, right, um, that's, that's monumental, uh, monumental, excuse me. Um, th this time around, um, they, they killed our Bernie Sanders. They buried him, um, that which is why I'm worried that this is truly, truly the end game, right? Um, because at least last time there was a there was a concerted effort to try to save the nation, the nation's economy, the nation's people, restore some dignity, um, and at least try to get, keep the game going for as long as you can. Um, I, I'm afraid because we didn't take those lengths and, and, and go through those great lengths now. Because, I mean, look, look, looking at it, apples to apples, this is almost identical to that situation. Um, with the crises that have compounded upon each other at one time, right? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to say this uh, once again, some uh, foil hat shit. I'm wondering now, seeing the pattern of the predatory um, uh, looting that that ha has happened um, almost immediately following some sort of uh, economic or health crisis in the U.S., if that economic crisis has always been orchestrated um because once again let, let's look at what happened before <clears throat> excuse me the the great depression and the stock market crash right mm -hmm. uh war pandemic um crash okay capitalism failed um now we're um you know in this situation okay we need to restore the country uh new deal we know New Deal works. Instead of just keeping the New Deal like 1939, 1940, that's gutted. 
<clears throat> on the on on the on the grounds um, of and ruling of a Supreme Court case in which um, uh, they stated that the basically all the programs uh, implemented were unconstitutional. The New Deal program. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was dismantled almost immediately after we recovered from from that and started, you know, um, headed into World War Two. Yeah, and, and a lot of this, a lot of the legislation was opposed by private industry as well. Like it's the same shit. Yeah, yeah. The same shit. But this time, this time, you don't get an FDR. Like understand the importance of that. Yeah. And there's no effort to save the society, the economy this time. I know. I know. Tom Harper often says that. Like, in a row. Uh, I know, like, uh, Tom Hartman often says, he's been saying it with Bernie for a while, that Obama should have been our FDR. Should have. He missed that opportunity because he didn't believe in it. I don't think he ever even cited FDR while he was campaigning. No, I, I don't think so either. Yeah. He just said change and hope. Yeah, it's like Democrats never, like, obviously they run away from anything that would pre perceive them as being remotely leftist. But they never talk about FDR, and they never even talk about Jim, uh, 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 Carter, President Carter. And like, even as a, a kid, when I was in, when I was in during the Clinton administration, I remember like, how come no? We always like at the time, uh, Nixon died, Reagan was dying. I think Reagan died first, and then Nixon. Maybe not. I might be getting those too confused. But like. Nixon and Reagan were dying, so there was a lot of celebration, quote unquote, of like all these Republican presidents, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Bush Senior was still around. So that, and I think Ford might have been around then too. It's like, why? Where? And I was like, okay, here are all the Republican presidents. Where are the Democratic presidents? I was like, oh wait, Carter's still alive. How come no one's talking to him? You know what? Um, I um, when I was putting together the, well, I'm still putting together. Uh, we're trying to make it a little more presentable. The the terms database. Um, I, I I was looking for images um, to associate with uh, my definitions, and uh, one for the new Democrats happened to be. I, I saw a few different ones posted online where it was uh, a picture with. Uh, it was uh, Obama, uh, Clinton, um, Carter, and I wanted. I can't remember who the fourth um who the who the fourth democrat was a former president yeah yeah they wouldn't have been they would have only been just, just the three right clinton. yeah card and clinton and Obama okay president. okay so, so so there was somebody with them i can't recall necessarily if it was joe biden um but in these photos but it was there there's four of them basically but it was like the, the you know a picture taken in the oval office of the new democrats but most of uh, what caught me in, in these photographs, and I'll try to um, find them and post them up so people can see exactly what I'm talking about. Carter's always, you know, every, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's um, George W. Bush. It's the last three presidents. Yeah, so uh, Bush yeah. would have been in there. Yeah, yeah. So George W. Bush, uh, Obama, and Clinton, and we, we, we all know what Obama and Clinton uh, were about. Um, Definitely, they 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 looked um, to be peas in the pod, cozied up with uh, Bush. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, uh, like I said, what struck me in these photographs is that um, Carter was always off to the side. He was never close to them. He never yeah, had yeah. his hand wrapped around him. He was always yeah. sort of in the background. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because because uh, Carter was the one who lost. He lost to Reagan, and but and since then the Democrats have never like forgiven him for that. They don't forgive him for losing. Oh, so that's a punishment. I, I thought it was sort of a moral stance. Okay. I mean that too. Like if I, here's the thing. Like if you believe in what uh, President Carter stood for, at least some of the things he stood for, because like of course they don't have any problems with him breaking up the truckers' union. That's all good for them. Ah, but like, my guy. <laughs> yeah. But he, like, he, he stick to his convictions. I'm I'm going to keep reminding people that it was a shortcoming. Go ahead. Yeah, but like. They, of course, they're not celebrating like his pro peace stance, like the whole Munich yeah. thing. Uh, they're not. They're not celebrating the fact he put like solar panels on top of the White House, which Reagan immediately right. tore down. We've seen Indeed. that before. Yeah. So they're not hailing the things the way he was super progressive and super on top of, and kind of like 
actually pretty decent for. They mm. just completely ignore him. Yo, can, can, can I say this too? Uh, I think it was just yesterday uh, in my Google feed, uh, I saw a um, I saw an article, uh, I guess he's like in his 90s now, he's like 93 or something, 96. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, anyway, the article was, and they show him all bruised up. I guess he took a spill um, and once he recovered, he went back to the job site to help build houses again, right? Yeah, they... What has Clinton done with his time? He made himself richer. What has Obama done with his time? Netflix deal and making himself richer. Mm -hmm. And uh, help to stomp out the best hope we have for renewing this economy and yep. restoring society. Because like I said, we, we don't get an FDR this time, guys. Fucking Obama fought Bernie Sanders harder than he fought Trump. And, bo Dude. and if both want to get rid of his legacy. What do they want to get rid of his legacy for? Hmm. Yeah, Trump was just like a bigot and a monster, and Bernie yeah. Sanders like I want to give everyone health care, not just a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernie's a damn Democrat. He's he's independent, but he's a damn Democrat. He's the only guy up there in or in that state who at least appear to, from in from what I've seen for the past forty years or so, 30, 30 years, um, actually champion social justice and equality like a democrat uh the definition of a democrat and, and workers is yeah and workers yeah right yeah dude new deal was the, the first and only time we had really like um a, any worker working class specific uh benefits and you know the the, the fair standards labor act came out of that too mm. right um we don't get that again we, 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 we get a worse, um, I don't know if this gig economy is going to boom again, if it's going to be part two, or if it's going to be a different version, has a different name. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we got the crappy gig economy out of the 2008 crash. Out of this, right now, people are just uh, still out of work. Who, who knows what's going to happen? Um, conspiracy theory shit, and I'm sorry for saying stuff like this, guys, but I feel like just with the outsourcing that has gutted America, um, and, and just really sticks a middle finger at the skill that um, we used to invest in. I, I feel like, and with, I mean, come on, like you, nobody can deny China's uh, rise and influence, right? And our ties with them and our debts to them. Um, I feel like the U.S. is now primed to become just another nation of call centers and low paid wage labor um textile factories or, or, or whatever uh, automation didn't destroy you know in in the form of uh but that's what's uh, physical labor. That's no what's no scary. it may it's not even scary. come back to that and we may not even get to that oh you, you don't think no i think you just mentioned like automation's gonna like eliminate the need need to have textile work so we'd have to rebuild the factories to even have the factory well well you always have to cook um People are always going to want their hair done. Um, cooking, cooking is very localized. If anything, you can say maybe farming might come back because you heard about the story how we've, over the course of the pandemic, we've sold a lot more meat to China. Yeah, why the hell are we shipping chicken carcasses over there? And wow, yeah. I didn't know most of our processing happens over there through a trade deal for mm -hmm. a meat. Like we, they, 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 they kill the animal here, ship it over there. It gets processed over there because um, there's some sort of sweetheart deal going on globally, I guess, in which the U.S. gets to pick uh, who has approved um, livestock. There, there's a uh, God. I what's what's going called, on here, B? There's a documentary I think called Food Inc. I've watched that. Yeah, and that's like a really interesting doc about the globalization of like how we how we live how we eat everybody needs to eat everything needs to eat almost uh but like i think almost exclusively but like it's <laughs> like localized like you i mean prior to the industrial age it's like if you didn't farm or if you weren't near a farm or work at a farm you didn't eat you go you went to the market maybe but like even the market had to like be next to a farm you couldn't because you couldn't refrigerate mm -hmm. so now because of refrigeration and tra uh, travel and like factory farming and preserving, we can 
your food doesn't have to be as localized. And because of that, we become more detached. But like, if that wasn't bad enough, then you have corporations going to like countries and uh, co communities in Africa and communities in South America saying like, hey, we now own the patent to that plant, to that seed, to that growth, because we spread it with our chemicals, Monsanto. Uh, and, and yeah. you, can't, you can no longer participate in the, the ritual or the food growing that you've been doing for eons. Yes, because you, you, you can't just take that seed of that fruit that was grown with that seed specifically and throw it into the ground and put water on it and have that seed grow. That's a damn shame. They done perverted nature. Yeah. Uh, commoditization of nature. The earth has already provided us with everything we need, and we bastardize the shit out of that. Mm -hmm. We raped the with, we, we created the dust bowl, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, talk over you, but no, no. Dust Bowl, that was a result of industry and uh, 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 agriculture has always been private industry in the U.S. and then over, over producing, right? right. It just ruins everything. It's, it's destruction is in its very nature. It's like uh, what uh, Malcolm, uh, goddamn. I, no, I forgot the uh, Jeff Goldblum's character says in Jurassic Park. Uh, you thought I was going to say X, but wrong mouth. Uh, but he's hey, when he's like, him. science always says like, yes, I can do this thing, but never asks, should I? Or, uh, yeah. uh, uh, basically, a conversation <laughs> of his point. A genius. Yeah, but I, I I can't wait for someone to patent the sun. Uh, we're already even selling off. People. Tom Cruise owns part of the moon, people. I think Mel Gibson might too. Um, oh, we're selling off parts of the moon. You you realize like there's no national jurisdiction over the moon. When did this start happening? I didn't. This know oh shit. oh dude maybe about ten years ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, literally maybe about ten years ago or so when I started seeing this in the mainstream. Yeah, people. Like, they people, may not even live long enough to go to the moon yet. They yep. bought. Yep. Parts of it. So if I go to the moon, I start like, like you know, setting up like a farm somewhere or just a habitat on the moon. I'm not saying me, but people. Like yep. in 200 years from now, I was like, oh, you can't have that. Tom Cruise, an uh, American actor it, from 200 years ago, bought that. His so estate. Like, his estate his owns name. that. Yep. They, they sell any acres, and for for uh, I think you can actually go on Google and Google this map. I think for the most part, they're fairly like even um, quadrants. Yeah, because like there's so. no. It's like there's not mountain ranges or rivers that really create a <laughs> yeah. divide. That's insane. I did not know about that. Yo, know, like I, I never thought that the the premise of the Horton Hears a Who movie was um, ridiculous with uh, commoditizing uh, clean air in the bottles. I always felt like, like I always, <clears throat> excuse me, I've always joked around as a kid growing up that eventually we'd have to start paying a life tax. And if you couldn't afford to pay that life tax, that they'd actually come and like shoot you down or something. Mm -hmm. um that's almost a, how dystopian things are getting um i think if things continue to run unchecked <laughs> excuse me but that's getting really extreme right where'd you find out about this moon thing dude the the news like like i said about like 10 years ago it started popping up um can, can you not find anything about it i'm looking for it now i'm asking i'm, I'm on forbes and it's like mm -hmm. forbes says you can't Hold on, hold on. I'm just going to Google which celebrities own parts of the moon. Celebrity. Yeah, they were actually selling these deeds. Uh, this man who owns the moon. Uh, okay. Business Insider. This is uh, 2013. Okay, Dennis Hope, uh, head cheese of Lunar Embassy yes. Corporation yes. in Nevada. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. There, there, there. There's actors, and and I would see this pop up every every now and again. I want to say around like uh, 2010 ish, I started seeing it in mainstream I, news. I wonder if this isn't a sham that just actors bought into, and well, like they didn't bother to see if they, you can actually legally do this. Well, 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 it doesn't matter when you have that kind of wealth and disposable income to throw around anyway. Like, that's the point of being that elite, right? Sure. Oh, like, I bet you I know what they did. I, I'll 
I don't have time to read all this, but I bet you I know what this person is doing. He's basically saying like, the second it becomes available that you can purchase it, I will guarantee you that we will work to get you these acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he they, there's printable deeds, man. And like I said, man. there's an actual map where you can see. You. Um, now, not on this site specifically, but um, the, you can go and maybe Google image, and um, there's um there's actually a map where it has in the quadrant the name of the actor or the millionaire or whoever who owns that sector. Yeah, it's crazy shit, man. Like, I mean, we're, we're really narcissistic and like we're, I think that they hate hey, that's the space more, the, the space more, the space force. I can't even say that shit because it's so dumb. Um, mm -hmm. It's, well, is it any secret that the space race wasn't about getting to the moon, but it was about weaponizing space? Is there any question about that now? Or is that still just foil hat shit? Wait, what'd you say? Is it any question now that the space race was about weaponizing space, not getting to the moon first? Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, like Star Wars, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a goddamn name, fucking Reagan. Uh, <laughs> it was a competition. Like, instead of working together, it was like, no, we got to beat the Ruskies because they got a satellite up there. They can spy on all us Americans. So Sputnik. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's what this is for. And I guarantee you they're going to be the force that, uh, that, that protects that property, you know it. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, that's capitalism in a nutshell. It, this yeah. is ridiculous. Go, go ahead. Yeah, like, I, I, I just hope that this is really just someone who's really clever at scamming rich people. Hey, yo, regardless, this is it's a show of your elitism. That's all they oh. care about, status. It's yeah. the only thing that matters to these people. Doesn't yeah, matter it's, how like, it's like art. It's like art. It's just like, oh, I paid a uh, fucking fifty million dollars for this, like Picasso. So That's I got it. I could have got a twenty dollar print from Amazon. Oh, well, fuck Amazon, but you know, from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's status, right? <laughs> it, it looks the same. And they get they can play in their little like it's like a it's fantasy football for rich people. Yeah. It's like you don't have to own that team. You don't have to. You didn't draft that player, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can pretend like you did. And you show yeah. off all your rich friends like, oh, no, I own this quadrant on the moon. Which quadrant do you own? <laughs> what? Oh, who, 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 uh, who wants to own the moon? First of all, I've never thought about it. Me neither. I just, for me, the moon's just like a piece of land and a stepping stone. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it is. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, 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 it, it was indeed to, to uh, discoveries. And we, we left the solar system. That's amazing. We, we left the solar system, but we can't figure out human greed and how to get past this fatal flaw that keeps fucking things up. But, and once again, I apologize for the language I don't normally use, but um, a former sailor here, and I'm frustrated because this is dumb. This is dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah, there was, there was something I was going to say. Go ahead. But you remind, when you talk about like people owning pieces of the moon, celebrity specifically, and I don't remember. It was something. Oh, I remember now. Mm. I found out something else this week. And you can find videos of this. Did you know Did you know about the prison rodeos? Or the prisoner what? rodeos? No. So, I was watching a, a, a clip of a John Oliver's show, and it was, it was about prison labor, and he had like a segment on in Louisiana, there is a there's a rodeo which uses prison labor, specifically prisoners, and they give them like twenty five cents. But they'll literally like put them in like a black and white striped shirt with some with some gear for protection, and it'll have them like sit there and get basically impaled by uh, bulls and steers and goddamn horses. modern day gladiator games. Like seriously, it's a Mandingo fight. That's all. I, that's immediately what I called it. It's like this is from mm -hmm. Jenga. It's like literally like what choices they have. And I, of course, like I watch an ABC kind of like local news report on it. And of course, the prisoner was like, oh, we want to do that because we want to prove to people that we're human beings. I'm like, you're what? being used for sport, you poor fool. You're what? There. People are mocking you at this point. Oh, my God. Like, like, I'm almost in tears right now. That's so sad that those people it, have to do I'm that. Enraged. Like, apparently, there was one in Texas that ended like in the 80s. But this is the last one still in this country in Louisiana of all places, which isn't surprising. But I'm wow, like, 
this shouldn't this fall under cruel and unusual punishment? I know they volunteer yes. and I know they're being paid like a nickel. <laughs> but that's even low can... their, their wages now, man. Like <laughs> minimal. I'm laughing. Minimum wage yeah. for prisoners. Ha ha ha. Yeah, it's the most minimal of minimalist wage. And like I guess if they do like the bucking horses, they can uh, get a, a hundred dollar cash price or something of that nature. And it's just like why like they're in jail for who knows what reasons i don't know and like maybe there's like if they, if it was like a skill they were learning maybe <clears throat> if they wanted to but like they're prisoners what real choices do they have it's like when <laughs> it's like rape that happens in prisons from the guards or whoever else it's like they don't have a choice they can't go anywhere they their rights <laughs> yes. their rights have been stripped away so they can't really consent can they nope they are um property at the point yeah. I got Siren coming. Right. That's fine. Yeah, I just found that out, like, I think yesterday. So this moon estate thing is also kind of blowing my mind. We're some weird creatures, man. At least a handful of us. Yeah. It says, yeah, it sucks. There's such a minority of people, too. And we haven't figured this shit out. And... Two, man, you know, 250 years almost, 245, what is it officially? Either way, too long, too long. <laughs> and like, yeah, guys, like, oh my God, status quo is, go. it goes a lot deeper than, than you think, than we're using it. Um, people are taking status quo back to the 80s. Um, some, some may take it back to the 60s, but overall, um, breadcrumbs we we've received and you know there's been no change it's it's the same america more gadgets but i mean the rest of the world benefits from the gadgets too and they they, they're they're more advanced for the most part than than we are here it's 1776 with with ferrari man well it just means we can run ourselves into our wall faster and dumber Idiocracy. Yeah. That's a, that's another thing. Going back to my point about how we're isolationists, like it also makes the world. I mean, we spread our influence out too much for sure. But like once we really, empires crumble from within. Mm-hmm. They crumble. They're not conquered. But like once we start crumbling more, then like the rest of the world can just kind of like put a fence around us. Like nope, <laughs> very easily. Like, oh, no, no travel from America. Sorry, you can't go. Uh, no, no boats from America. Sorry, you guys. Have yeah, to you know what? Um, and and I think the day of reckoning is coming. Um, and I Canada, and the, the, Canada's it, already been like, especially after uh, COVID, they're like, ah, we're gonna like limit land travel from <clears> America. Yeah. But um, I mean, just just a simple fact that we've outsourced uh, like all of our uh, manufacturing and production, mm-hmm. right? Um, COVID definitely showed us how vulnerable we are in that regard. But understand that that also revealed to other nations, right, who may not have realized the uh, power that they're in in that position, mm-hmm. right? having that upper hand, oh, we can sanction the U.S. anytime we want, just like they do to us. Because mm. the, where the fuck are the resources coming from? If they want the resources, they're going to have to start a war in every goddamn country. I mean, that's every like the, goddamn the, country. That's definitely the double edge to a, mm-hmm. a neoliberal uh, glo- globalization. It's the fact and, that, like, just, we, made it, we made it that they can. Be, they don't need us. And capitalism, period, because it's it's cannibalistic. It's just I don't get why. Who bought into this? Who couldn't see through this? Who who maintains this for two hundred and fifty years and it just fails over and over and over? Well, prior to the fact that like when we had developed like an education system to make sure that everybody can read, and then we got the inter- internet, so it means we I can be potentially just as informed about a country as like a dude in China or a dude in fucking India. Would be. Yeah. And that's why we had save the internet campaigns. And that's why they keep going after the internet because it, 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 it digs a tunnel right under, uh, it, it digs that dirty drug tunnel underneath the tuition wall. <laughs> right? Right. Um, right. And they're, they're going to go for it again. Hard next administration. I keep trying to uh, warn people of this. 
Um, it, it's yeah. just going to come up again. It's probably yeah, because that was under a lot of that was under uh, Bush and Obama. So yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. just a Trump thing. It was like no, the people who don't want us to like educate or know about anything want to keep that for kids. Yep. Yep, because it, it, expanding your worldview gives you knowledge, and like you said, if you if you can't if you're walled off in your environment and you don't get exposed to other things that are happening, mm -hmm. and, and, you, and and you yeah. don't understand that there's other nations who have more than a two party system, and <laughs> there's other nations that have since the 1800s wanna... have nationalized healthcare. I'll let you go on. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to know. I want to see a study of how many Americans don't know about the parliamentary system of Canada or the UK. Yo, look at Mexico, right? Um, I, I've traveled down there enough, and I've seen like some of the posters for the campaigns. They have so many different parties, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's. I, I, yeah, I, I don't really know like, if I'm misspeaking, but I've, I think I've seen about like five different political parties that represents different sectors of working class and and what, what have you. Yeah, but it's but you know, Aaron, if you vote third party, clearly you're going to make sure the Republicans win. You, you can't vote third party because they won't allow it. Because mm -hmm. they make the rules won't allow that to be an option, and they haven't no, for two hundred fucking years. After Ross Perot kind of quote unquote tanked it for Bush, but like really, fuck Bush and fuck fuck Ross Perot and like fuck Clinton at this point, they've made it like near impossible that like third party support. Of, and in the presidential election matters at all. Well, see, see, see. Once again, we're we're, we're still a little myopic and, and narrow in our viewpoint. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna make this point again. Nothing has changed for 250 years, B. Yeah. Like it, it, it's always been this way. Like it, it it wasn't like back in the day when when the Puritans came over and when we established uh, our independence and formed our government her, uh, based off of the British parliamentary government, um, that people only had this binary thinking of um, <clears throat> uh, red, blue, uh, Democrat, Republican, because we know for a fact, um, one of the funnest places on earth, Six Flags, Magic Mountain, in which once again, I, I didn't uh, learn the history of until I moved here to San Antonio and visited the Alamo and understood the significance of six flags and that each one of those flags represented immigrants who were in America at the time who died and fought for the Alamo, right? From Germany, from you have it, um, I don't have all of them in front of me, um, but you, you get where I'm going. Um, yeah. Yeah, we need to expand our worldview, just. Yeah, I'm fr I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated because it's it's. How do you combat something that like so, so adamant? Two hundred something years of the it, like not nothing has changed. Nothing at all, at all, at all. The change is mainly surface layer, but the deeper roots of it are still consistent. It's like yeah, uh, you look at like who's still. Like black people in our society are still like economically at the bottom, mm -hmm. even though like so many black Americans have been here longer than other groups of people. Yep. But then that's where racism comes into play, because it's like not just the racism that keeps uh, systemic and implicit bias of racism in play, but also why people can use racist justifications for how the world works. So it's like mm -hmm. Shapiro and his fucking ilk will say like, well, it's black culture is why we, why we're at the bottom, which is basically a way of saying there's nothing you can do about they're going to be stupid and ignorant and violent forever. So you just throw over your heads up and just keep locking them up. That's what that ultimate conclusion is from that argument. That's the very basis of uh, Joe Biden's crime bill uh, filibuster. Yep. Yeah, he's him and his ilk are directly responsible for keeping those i mean he did it back in the 70s when he was like i don't want that like curly head dark haired kid hanging out with my blonde blonde son <laughs> nothing has changed people 250 years nothing has changed you, i feel like i'm going insane just like really coming to this sobering realization like i mean pushing all the bullshit aside all the political party shit all the 
the the the the veneer has been completely shattered and the 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 ashes have been swept away from me right there's i'm i'm never going to be the same person after coming to this realization and it sucks but it it it, it, it other people need to get here too yeah um, need, education needs to permeate yeah yeah so like anytime you hear like some fucking hick or some idiot fucking liberal talk about like oh it's just all trump will, like correct their ass like no this is existing before <clears throat> trump and democratic operatives were also responsible for creating a racist policy and through, throughout history yeah throwing kids in cages and warmongering Th- throughout history <laughs> throughout the history throughout yeah history. I, I would even say just like get them in a place where their brains can still comprehend like tell them just recent history like, don't let Obama skate on shit. George W. Bush. Yeah, then you go back to Bush, because I remember George W. Bush very well. And then Fuck you go back to I knew people who died for his war, for his fucking oil, for yep. corruption. And you can go back to his Papa Bush. And he was a CIA man. And started and also led us into a war in Iraq, Iraq part one. Mm-hmm. And then you can go back to Reagan. It's like, and like most people who are older, People died of a fucking personal feud. The Bushes were in, they knew the Bin Ladens personally, and people died for, goddamn. Yeah. The audacity, dude. Even back during the the second Iraq war, I was like, I was like, if all these, like, fucking rich, wealthy people have a problem with each other, they should just fight it out. They should. Like, Yo, go to the street. Matter of fact, yo, make billions off of it, right? Like, paper mm-hmm. fucking in the ring, celebrity billionaire matches. Yeah, I don't you got, care. You got, you got cretins like making homeless people and fights for sandwiches. Yeah, fucking, I want to see goddamn rich people fight it out. I'd pay. Oh, big tag big. team with the fucking Coke brothers or some shit, right? Like WWE style. Like, come on, man. And am I not merciful? They can have gloves and padding if they want to. I just want to see blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck it. A millions have to die on their behalf. Uh, just you know, gladiator games, right? If they want show to do your, war, yeah. Show if me. They want to do war. Let them have war, but should, no, 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 no. Show me your primal superiority. I want to see some fucking uh, uh, Black Panther owl, uh, uh, style challenge shit going on between these motherfuckers. Yeah, they, Mitch they McConnell. Want to and, and they want to prove how hard they work. Then let's see them work hard. Yep. Yeah. I, I want to say I want to see some Star Trek fucking shit going on between Mitch McConnell and um um oh goddamn who, who's the Democratic um, uh, Pelosi or Chuck Schumer? Uh, Schumer. There you go. Right. I wish our Congress was a little more like heated because you seem like. <laughs> Parliaments in other countries where they like literally go on, go on. Go oh, on. dude, yeah, the people jumping over tables, just punches thrown. Yo, I, I, it shows me those people care. <laughs> they do. Yo, honestly, one of my biggest criticisms here is once again, there have been too many mornings in my life where I've woken up and I had the news tell me, hey, um, this was passed at 2 30 in the morning while you were sleeping. It didn't show up in any newspaper. You didn't even know this legislation was on the table and this affects your life now. Um, I really do believe that we cannot really apply political pressure on these guys until we make every goddamn congressional and Senate hearing open to the public. Them seeing the actual faces that they're going to affect, upset at them, or sad, or ready to come and jump no, over yeah, the table no one can face face or, 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 or throw a goddamn shoe at them like George W. Bush. Oh, no, no, I'm talking go, about... If you go at it like that, that would be great. If people but, watch that. No, no, yeah, I'm talking about like that, like old school, like freaking witch trial, like a jury of your peer bullshit. Like, if you live in D.C. or if you want to travel to D.C. and go to the Capitol while there's a hearing and it's public and all cameras need to be there, the press need to be there, the general fucking public need to be in but there to count them. Here's the thing. Hold them accountable. Here's the thing. But here's the thing. That would be fantastic. Tar and you know feather them if they don't listen you know, to them. There's, there's a few reasons why they don't. that doesn't happen. First Tar- off, they are all agree with each other <laughs> tar and feather second, yeah they don't <laughs> okay, go ahead. second off they don't care about our issues so like True. they're not going to get that impassioned about anything and that's why they want to keep everything civil they don't no, like no, no, trump. No. trump makes things uncivil 
I'm, I'm sure like Nancy Pelosi and those people want to punch Trump in the fucking face, but they want to be civil. So they don't, they want to play the high game and they want to take the high road. So they're not going to really get impassioned about that because they don't care about what Trump really does. He's just not doing it. And he's doing it mask off. They just want the mask on. <laughs> so in our piecemeal efforts to get the right people into office so that we can actually, uh, Re, 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 repeal and replace. Yeah, Bernie wasn't civil. He he didn't he didn't congratulate anyone on their birthdays. He was being uncivil. That, that that's fine with me. That's 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 fine with me. They show him way more. That that showed way more balls at the time. I'm I'll leave Bernie alone. That, right that's now. why Jim Clyburn didn't come out and say he knew he knew Bernie. He knew Joe though, because Joe congratulated him and his wife on his birthday. So he knew Joe. We should know Joe. So vote for Joe, South Carolina. <laughs> Eat at Joe's. Fuck, I still hate that. That still pisses me off. Yeah, um, that's annoying. Yeah, I, I, I want your Senate fights. Mm-hmm. There's a, I want your Senate fights. That would be awesome. No, dude, but like seriously, I, I, I think um, that we, we, we do need to push for some. Um, we, we need to push for that, right? Um, none of those hearings should ever be close to the public. No, no Senate hearing should take place without being announced to everyone at least 48 hours in advance. I say even yeah. longer. Um, yeah, none of this. Oops, four in the morning, we stole your rights yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It needs it there. It like I said, if you're if if you're a member of these United States, I don't care what your immigration status or citizen status is. Um, like fuck that right now. If you live in these United States and are affected by the policies that these guys are making, I hear you. I feel you. They don't care. They're indifferent. Uh, they're detached from us and, and our needs. But if the people there who voted those guys in the office are there um, looking at them and surrounding them, and uh, maybe there's people standing out on the steps and they have to put TVs out in, uh, outside the Capitol and speakers so that everybody standing outside can see what the fuck is going on. Maybe they'll be more inclined to uh, make uh, more um, uh, decisions on the right side of history, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you right? know if there was ever a point in the country's history where that was the case, where like the public could have been in there for their? I I, I don't I don't think so. Uh, but you've seen to in a certain extent, like over your lifetime and my lifetime, for sure, more and more, uh, or, or less and less, the media has been allowed in those hearings. Sure. Mm-hmm. I noticed that for a fact because I used to watch C. Remember C-SPAN? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I used to watch that. C-SPAN. Yeah, I used to watch that on cable. And I noticed just like kind of less and less over time, you know, before uh, politics became well, sens- sensationalized. You know, you, know why, you know also why. Yeah, that, that's the case because media companies, because of uh, uh, it was the Telegon uh-huh. that Clinton, Clinton did, it uh-huh. was no longer profitable. So now that's when we got like the CNNs, the Fox News and the MSNBCs. It's all glitz and glamour. But yeah. It's all fucking just to keep you entertained. It's to keep you entertained. It's not to inform you. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh God! Oh, who, I, I was just listening to somebody kind of speak on that recently, and I was like, "Wow, yeah, that's crazy." Yeah, new news, uh, uh, local news networks, um, or that the local news broadcasts had to fall under uh, entertainment umbrellas for, for mm-hmm. these companies. So, so the reasons for putting certain things on air became different. So yeah, it is no longer to inform the public because this is important and serious. It's more like. Uh, it was like, oh, I have to, I have to talk about like a plane that crashed and disappeared for two weeks. Mm-hmm. No, between um, but but between uh, like say Bush, uh, W. Bush's administration and now, right? Like, ha- ha- having ha- is it just me or like, it, or has there actually been a kind of slow decline in like obvious blatant barring? of the press from from these things like more and more i see i mean trump trump has been involved in that too i can't say no yeah exactly like, uh, i'm saying like this obama right. was in some ways obama claimed to be like one of the more transparent presidents but he was the one applying the espionage act to uh journalism yep. more so than anybody in the entire country's history hey, you so know the snowden's still not here right snowden uh julian assange it's like it's one of those things like even if he could have bought him back home totally it's one of those things that causes a chilling effect to our media so like 
in addition to the fact that like uh, news media corporations, which are entertainment corporations, want sensational stories to keep mm-hmm. people interested, they also don't want to take the risk of potentially having to go legally against the federal government. So it's like, hey, I don't want you reporting on that story about how we're like wasting money in Afghan- Afghanistan and Iraq because that could get us into trouble. So it's just like throw that in the back burner for like 10, 10 years until like another Republican president's in office and it will let that stop. <laughs> and somebody's on their deathbed. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they're not going to want to take any of those risks. Mm. Oh, hold on, the dog's barking, I think. All right. I think you might need to get out and get some water. Oh, man. Um, shoot, it's almost 11 here. All right. Hey, well, l- l- let me let him out. But yeah, it's probably, come on. It's probably a good time to, uh, to, to, to cut things off. Um, shoot, did you have any, did, did you have anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, no, I think I got most of it out. All right, cool. Yeah, dude. Just, yeah, man. Um, that good, good rant session. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't. I'm depressed. <laughs> um, I'm also depressed that, that last that last one we did didn't didn't make it. It didn't. Uh, I, I still it was all have, about the Black Lives Matter and police brutality. Yeah, I, I still have the footage or the the audio. Uh, I'm still going to try my best to get that up. Um, yeah uh because that yeah it's a shame that it just somewhere within um recording just something reset and i thought i heard it too just kind of something reset and yeah the the the, the source is bad so i'll, I'll see I'll, I'll still try to see what i can do with that um I will uh, also say too uh, to at Pussy Riot Girl while we're on the topic of the failures of centrism, this is essentially uh, this conversation today. <laughs> it, it highlights exactly those failures. Um, and if you have any questions of what status quo is, um, 2020, uh, when, when were we established again, Brian? 1776. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that's status quo. Um, like I said, we have Uggs and iPhones and um, Bluetooth and uh, Tesla, uh, self-driving cars, Elon Musk, SpaceX, Space Force. Um, but Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, yeah. Um, but America overall, um, the the conservatives have have succeeded, right? Mm-hmm. They they they've succeeded. The 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 predatory capitalists have succeeded, while the rest of the world, like I said, back in the late eighteen hundreds, evolved into more uh, social um, governing well, networks anything, and economies. Well, if anything, the the recent uprising against the police kind of demonstrates that they're losing their grip, because. Well, I think we might have mentioned last week, one of the most inspiring things I've noticed is that, like, I've seen plenty of white people on these streets, mm-hmm. more so than anyone else in, in right now, and getting their heads cracked. Yes. By these fucking cops. Yes. It used to be just cracking our heads and no one, like, would believe us. Yes, but but once again, Brian, um, this, this that nothing has changed. Re- re- remember, segregation well, not- didn't exist 20 years specifically. Um, yeah. And after the Emancipation Proclamation, we were we got along, we, we got along fine, then separation, and then working class issues, right? And then you yeah, have, but right now we're reaching a boiling point. It's like, we we reached the boiling point in 1930s. Um, yeah, and, and look what happened. We got the New Deal. Yep, and, but but who 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 fought in that? Black people, white people, poor white people, right? Mm-hmm. The cop mm-hmm. who attacked Wait, cops attacked them. Yeah, women too. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, same thing. So n- nothing has changed, people. Nothing has changed. This is just another cycle, right? Because what need to I can the also, cycle. I can also say it's like it's also dem- demonstrated. Like we got the New Deal because of that forceful, forceful action of like leftists and activists and workers of that time. Mm-hmm. But like 
even back then, if you, I'm sure you've seen the Tom Hartman clip about like the libertarians of the time wanting to roll back the New Deal policies. That's what they did. That's what Reagan oh, was about. Right. That's what these Democrats are about. They want to roll back all that stuff. Fucking Clinton cut welfare programs. He's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it was because of us not being vigilant. It was because like communism basically mm -hmm. being routed from the country. They did that first. They first said they went after the communists. Then they went after the civil rights activists. And yeah, like, yeah. It, 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 sorry to interject real quick, but just, um, yeah. In, in my studies here on the the linking of healthcare and uh and and employment and looking at how healthcare was handled uh, pre uh World War II, socialists were actually pretty active in this country. Like it was a pretty like common thing. Like you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't so vilified at the point. Yeah. The, the vilification of communism and socialism really came about during the Cold War. Mm. Everyone forgets Russia was our ally during World yes, War II. Yes, they were. They fought most of the battles and they they kicked fucking Hitler's ass in Stalingrad. Mm -hmm. Hitler tried to invade Russia. Yep. So they were our ally. And then after the, the formation of the Cold War happened when uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Truman dropped the bomb as a sign to America's dominance to the Russians because he didn't like the Russians. He didn't like the communists. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you don't, don't, don't get any ideas, Russia. I know you proved you were big and bad against Germany, but we're America, so don't even get any ideas. Uh -huh. And that's what since we started the Cold War. And then the Russians like, all right, we're going to build our own nukes. We're going to make our own way to space. Like, oh yeah, you're not going to beat us to space. We're going to beat you to space. And that was all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. you don't, don't be like, you need to be a God fearing American, not like godless commie. That's if we believe in capitalism here. They believe in social, social stuff. Look at them; they're terrible. And when it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's a petty dick measuring contest between two people that everybody else has to fucking pay for. How, how do we allow this to continue to happen? I, I say we, we get rid of this is going to be very, very bold. But I say we get rid of this presidential leadership system. Right. And we need just need yeah, to like, fucking people. The supreme leader idea needs to it, should, it died. It should have died in, in, in uh, the UK. Yeah, when we came, when, yeah. when they came over people, here, people think, including fucking Trump, thinks that the president is a dictator or a monarch. I was like, no, they are public representatives. They work for us. We don't work for them. So when you say blue, no matter who, you are giving away your obfuscation to say like, I don't care what that person does. I will take them because they are our dear leader. Fuck that noise. They need to represent you. I don't yeah. care who they. Are. And you're talking about leaving doors open, man. Yeah, just having a a figurehead, a singular one who who has the power to yeah do like veto votes, right, or set executive orders, or get away with certain illegal acts until the Supreme Court finally uh, feels that it's worth taking a look at, uh, knowing that it's illegal. Um, <clears throat> but still, so many people were affected by that. Um, it, it 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 opens the door to what he's trying to be now, an, author, an authoritarian. Um, he's yeah. been closing up with China. I'm sure he's learned a lot of tactics with his visits over there. Um, yeah, we always love screaming about authoritarians who have to be on the left side of the political spectrum. Yep. They don't ever scream about uh, authoritarians on the right side of the spectrum because, you know, that's us. Yeah, because, I mean, China's China's industry is booming. They, they, they've grown the most exponentially, like, in the world in, what, the past 20 years or something? Mm -hmm. Like that, yeah. They're they're they they've become a global force um, to be reckoned with economically, and they used to be sort of the laughing stock. And that's going to pre present its own challenges. But the challenge mm -hmm. isn't because they're Chinese. The challenge no. is it's going to become another imperial power. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and and because of how how is being led, right? Yeah, because there's a lot of like worker exploitation in China. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a equal or egalitarian society. I mean, look at the Hong Kong. Look no, no, Kong. no. You, you you do what dear leader wants you to do, and you can only watch what dear leader wants you to watch. And yeah, they, um, they have extreme they, censorship laws in China. Yes. Like you can't even mention like riot is an illegal word in China. Yeah, it's like saying bomb on a plane here in the U.S. Pretty much. <laughs> what movie was that? Ben Stiller. Bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> 
don't remember that one. Is, uh, is this something about Mary? I, I no, no. I, I, th I think it was, um, I think it was uh, one of the Meet the Fockers or Meet the Parents ones. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. It just that's all I can say. It's just it's so absurd, and, it, and this is an existential crisis uh, to to the second degree for me right now. And I'm not saying that to like you know um, solicit anybody's pity or anything, but man, just everybody needs to wake up, and everybody needs to become engaged with uh, politics again. Um, and not necessarily politics and, and, and the political theater that we are, that, that we're used to here. We're not talking about House of Cards bullshit. We're actually talking about getting involved in your communities, your local government, um, attending city halls when it's safe to again when we have a COVID vaccine. Uh, yeah. uh, your work, your rights as workers. Yeah, um, we, we, we need to garner more support for the unions. It worked. It's what ha it, it's. Support of the unions was one of the um, probably single-handedly one of the um, greatest contributing factors to the success of the New Deal. From from what I'm seeing here, because uh, there there was already such a movement for um, you know uh, workers to uh, be able to uh, coalesce and bargain uh, collectively, right? And private industry fought that for decades, 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 decades. Uh, finally, when it needed to happen, right? Because they had to rebuild the working class, and what a better way to get people education and uh, you know job training than to join a union? And they and they already had you know a huge backing. So um, unions play such a huge role in in um, the economic recovery of this nation. In, in such six years, Brian, six years, they dismantled this new deal for the most part. You know, we have social security. Um, I couldn't wait. Yeah, like, yeah, there, there's, there's certain things that remain, but understand those certain things that, that remain kind of predate the new deal. And, but also talk about, at some point, not you have to do this tonight, obviously, yeah. but like, hopefully you get to talk about like, what, how they dismantled it. It's not like just, they I'm represented gonna, yeah. were in charge and said, like, I don't like this anymore. They convinced the public, yep. the voters, that they don't need these things anymore because you yep. know why? Black people will get it. You don't want black people to have the same thing you have. They'll take your stuff. So we got to cancel <laughs> some of the welfare programs that benefited you getting into the, the quote unquote middle class and able to improve your life mm -hmm. in order to get something for your work and your effort and participate in society as best as you can. And how they ate that shit up. I mean, you talk about a shit sandwich with... Like, like you said, not, nothing's changed. Status quo. They did the exact same tactics mm. they did to white workers in the founding of the country. And they're they, still doing it. Yep, still doing it. That's <laughs> why we got people, like, thumping for Trump when they were singing songs with their kids. Yeah, um, what the fuck is that them. shit? Like, like, do they really believe that in their heart of hearts? Like, you oh, see that... Absolutely certain they believe it. Like did they, did they, did their grandma must not have died from COVID or they most certainly don't have a family member who was affected by COVID, well, I'm guessing. The unfortunate trick with the conservative mind, and I say conservative, not just Republican conservative, no, but conservatives just the conservatism, party. yeah, the Democratic conservative as well. It's like they, it doesn't affect, it doesn't matter to them until it affects them personally. So I'm sure there's some people out there who like who are on the right who are conservatives who they've had like uh, some tragedy evolve with COVID, the COVID disease. And, they're, and, then, and then they're starting to kind of like wake up to it. Or maybe they just think like, ah, I, I just got a little unfortunate. So I guess some of this does matter. But, you know, I think the government's overblown. Mm -hmm. that, that's usually how it goes. Like maybe it's just the, the chip away from the, the, before the dam breaks. But that's really how it takes. They're just going to be in, some people are just going to be in pinnable wall of fucking ignorance until like a, a fucking stone gets broken. This is true. This is why we have anti-vaxxers and flat earthers uh, now after, I think like yeah, didn't Galileo understand that the planets were spherical? Yep. He uh, was, uh, I think he was murdered for it. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. Freaking radical they called him. <laughs> uh, oh man. 
I mean, Galileo, you, do you understand how primitive his technology was? I don't even understand how he was able to discover as many bodies that, as he did. Jeez. Um, wow. But yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna cover all that. As a matter of fact, um, uh, so the 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 series is still going to be under the uh, history of uh, U.S. labor struggles. Um, but specifically, like I said, uh, I found this National Institute of Health study um, around the Clinton administration, in which they were. Uh, it's the first time they studied really in the U.S. Um, the effects of of um, private healthcare uh, versus um, nationalized healthcare in the U.S. It's the first time that a study had been done, right? Uh, even even like after the New Deal, it's the first. Well, you know, like Hillary Clinton uh, during I think Bill's first year was trying to champion the single payer universal system. That yeah, no, later, no, no. twenty years later said could never happen. No, I know. Um, I, and, and my whole point of this is, I want to remind people that this is not the first time that this conversation has come up. Bernie Sanders is definitely not the uh, predecessor or the um, prophet. Let I say uh, mm -hmm. that message, not not by a long shot. Um, it came up in the early '90s. It came up before then. It came up in the dur during the Great Depression. It came up. Um, it's come up several times. It came up in the 1800s. Um, other countries, like I said, in the world decided to move more towards um, the, the systems that they have now, where, where they have um, single payer or nationalized uh, health care and UBIs and things like that, right? So we've always been behind for about, well, since, like I said, the late 1800s. Um, yeah, I mean, even look how long it took us to get rid of slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm going crazy every time I realize, wow, nothing has changed. All these centuries. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so I I'm going to be presenting that specifically. Uh, um, I'm I'm going to present present that in its entirety. Um, with my commentary. So that's going to take a a while. Um, but initially, I'm going to introduce this with my preamble which is gonna be uh, the next three uh, class sessions. Um, so I just make sure that um, for those listening, uh, remember to just visit um, the people class wherever you can uh, stream podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, Patreon, Anchor, uh, which we are using to record today. And I apologize if the quality isn't as good. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, go ahead and be sure to tune back in. Um, Brian, I want to thank you for uh, coming on today and joining me in this rant session. Um, thank you. That, that, that is what the quad is for. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Hey, I, I, how are things, before I let you go, how are things in California right now with uh, you guys being opened up and um, infection rates and whatnot, testing? Hell, hell if I know. I'm not going out. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, like yeah, I mean, like, gems and movies are trying to open up so i we haven't quite seen the effects of that yet i don't expect it's gonna end well because he, he, here's here's a dirty secret uh yeah movie theaters are opening up but the movie studios are not so Ooh. that should give you a clue to what they really think is going on Ooh. Mm. Mm, yeah so they want they want your money they want your butts in those seats but like no oh. risking that yet <laughs> they ain't risking opening up themselves to that yet yeah yeah i've seen actors or i've listened to some um podcasts and, and things on youtube with actors who stated that they weren't going back to work until there was a vaccine yeah and that and that's not even actors that are them deciding that's the studio heads yes people who obviously want the studios to be open so they can keep filming but they're mm -hmm. like no there may be some productions that might go into filming, but as far as I'm, as at least in animation, no, we're not opening yet. Uh, yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard uh, some to the effect of that as well. Um, mm. Damn, it's crazy shit. So, uh, wow. Well, uh, I guess I'll leave you guys with this. Um, what, what do you think um, we'll get in in in? replacement of the gig economy 
um, this time around. Um, do do you think we're gonna we're facing a uh, lifetime of call center work uh, for extremely low wages and um, sweatshops um, like we've uh, submitted the rest of the world to? Um, have we got our comeuppance? Um, is this the time of reckoning for America? Um, if you have any in, insights into that, um, send me an email, okay? Uh, the people class at gmail.com. Uh, uh, leave me a message here on uh, Anchor as well. Uh, and once again, uh, Brian, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you uh, once again for sharing your input today, sir. Um, it's a pleasure as always. Yeah, talk to you later. All right, brother. This is the Dean, and you have been listening to another session of The Quad for June 18th, 2020. I want to remind those who are listening to uh, call off for uh, Juneteenth in celebration of um, all the uh, Black lives and uh, the liberation of the working class um, for 2020. I want to remind you all that uh, the quad is recorded from the sprawling campus of Freedom University. Freedom University, that's F you to the corrupt politicians out there. I want to thank you all for listening in again. And thank you for tuning in to another session of the People Class Podcast, the official podcast of the People Class. I hope you found the information shared in today's session enlightening, or at the very least, uh, raise some questions. I extend an invitation to join us for more weekly sessions. And remember, our work does not stop here. Get active, organize, and take control over your destiny as an American working class person. Class dismissed.